Thank you, Mark. Well, the equation is quite simple on paper. Manchester United win their next three matches. They're crowned champions for a record 19th time. However, of course, they're not playing on paper. And in between the matches against Everton today and Arsenal and Chelsea, they have two matches against Schalke in the Champions League semi-final. And the question is, will that distract them? Certainly Sir Alex Ferguson says in his programme notes that he enjoys this time of year when he has to look at the bigger picture and the entire squad will be used because he, in his mind, is thinking of playing until the end of May, of course, with that Champions League final in mind. And he has made five changes. Rio Ferdinand for Vidic, Evans for Smalling, Fabio for Evra, Gibson for Carrick and Valencia for Giggs. Evra, Giggs and Carrick are on the bench. There is no Berbatov. Vidic is rested. Very rare, of course, for that to happen this season. He's been such a key player for them. Van der Sar is in goal. O'Shea, Ferdinand, Evans and Fabio across the back. A midfield of Valencia, Gibson, Anderson and Nani, Rooney and Hernandez up front. Everton make two changes. Heitinger isn't fully fit, so Coleman returns. Guy the striker is replaced by Rodwell. So they have Howard, a former Manchester United goalkeeper, in goal. A back four of Hibbert, Jagielka, Distan and Baines. A midfield of Coleman, Neville, Rodwell, Osman and Billy Letninoff and Beckford who scored here for Leeds United last season in the FA Cup as the lone striker, Jimmy Armfield. Yes, I was just trying to think really how, how well, we've talked a bit about Manchester United, how Everton are going to play this. I think, well, obviously we've got the back four. I think Neville might just play th that holding role in, in there. Because one of the things that uh, they've got to think about is when Rooney drops deep and starts spraying the ball around, you know, that's when Manchester United start, you know, moving. Because they still, you know, despite making changes, they've still got a very strong front front four, Manchester United. Valencia, Nani on the flanks, Hernandez with his pace up the middle, and Rooney, of course, you know, who on his day is really terrific. So the point is, Everton will have thought about that, and I think that's what Neville might do, just in front of that back four. We'll see. So Alex Ferguson in his programme notes talks about taking it on the chin that bitter pill that they had to swallow losing to Manchester City in the FA Cup semi-final not helped of course because it was from those noisy neighbours it's how they respond here today after that 0-0 draw against Newcastle on Tuesday their, their home form has been their saving grace hasn't it this season I mean well, it's a fantastic home record win 115 draw, you know drawn one lost nil scored 42 against nine I mean so that's an incredible statistic on its own that's enough really you know to have lifted them to the championship I think now they've lost to Manchester City I wonder where that was really in his priorities but the point is now the two big priorities winning the premiership I think he's still number one in my opinion and then of course but he's got Schalke to think about and that will have been in his mind in my opinion when he named this team today. There's been an early goal at Tannadice in the SPL, where Dundee United lead Kilmarnock by a goal to nil. But this is the Barclays Premier League, and this is Five Live Sports, and we're live at Old Trafford for this uh, first of our commentaries, because from three, with Mark and John Murray, we'll be at Molyneux for Wolves against Fulham. But this is a significant game at the top of the Barclays Premier League, and in the Power Championship, where Queen's Park Rangers will win if they uh, if they win will get promoted. You can hear that on Five Live Sports Extra. We will have updates from the Cardiff Stadium here on Five Live as Everton look for an early attack. They're playing in all royal blue. They're playing from right to left. They're attacking the Stretford end against a Manchester United sh side in their red shirts, white shorts and black socks. And Jaggy Elka dealing with the threat of Hernandez by clearing the ball downfield. Beckford up against Rio Ferdinand, two former Leeds United players. But uh, there was... Fabio, who's playing at right back. O'Shea, in fact, is uh, is at the left back, playing it forward. Fabio, who is a left back, playing on the other side, which yes. is a, is a surprise. Yeah, it is. But Ever is not playing. They just like that little bit of drive, that left footer, you know, coming down the left wing. So he does get forward a lot. I think he's played 32 league games, something like that, this season. Ever they do miss that little bit of width to give them when he's not playing. Here is Rooney, just dropping deep to collect the ball, being booed, of course, from a. Everton supporters for their former player, a player of, of course they once idolised as Valencia comes in now off the right touchline, plays it to Rooney, Fabio joins the attack from defence, lays it back to Anderson, just has to go back two or three yards, he's forward of the centre circle as Manchester United come forward and it's out towards Nani on that left hand side, looking to get away from Coleman who's clearly holding the arm of Nani and the, uh, the referee who is uh, 
Peter Walton giving a free kick and a clear free kick it was too to the home side. Nil nil, two minutes played. Then he stands over this free kick. Everton have every royal blue shirt back. Certainly, essential in the atmosphere in these early stages, the importance of this game. Bearing in mind the next two opponents for Manchester United in the Premier League Arsenal and Chelsea before they finish off with a trip to Ewood Park and then Blackpool at home on the final day. Gibson's ball from the halfway line bounces away from Wayne Rooney and through to Tim Howard. Jimmy Arnold. Yes, I think Manchester United are going to be banking a little bit today on Valencia on one side, Nani on the other. That little bit of width, what they try and do, they try and stretch Everton's defence across the field. That's the, that's the important thing about playing with these two wide men. I think it's given them a lot of success at home matches. This is Anderson. Looking for a ball in the air out towards Valencia. Curling under control by Valencia after a couple of touches. It's an early cross from the right-hand side. A little bit too early because there's only Hernandez in the penalty area. Nani did well to keep it in play on that left-hand side but eventually hooked away by the Everton right-back Hibbert. This is Rooney, though, for Manchester United. Coming in now in field, midway through the Everton half. Gibson cries out for the ball. It's duly at his feet now for the Irish international. Misplaced pass by Valencia. Manchester United, though, retain possession. And Evans, starting for the first time since he was sent off against Bolton, but United have given it away. And here is Rodwell, much coveted, of course, and uh, continually linked with the move to Old Trafford, much to the annoyance of... David Moyes, Everton though can't retain possession although they do have a throw in front of the Everton manager who's continuing urging on his players from the technical area in fact it's gone to a United throw It's almost a five-man midfield Everton, Beckford looks to be he's going to be sort of a target man, he seems to be the man who's uh, up there on his own, might be cause one or two problems that because the central defenders of Manchester United, if they get Secure in there, they'll come forward and they'll make life difficult for the midfield of Everton. Here's Van der Sar, who hadn't played in the last two league matches preceding Champions League games in those two matches against Chelsea. Rooney to Nani, sliding in was Hibbert, giving away a free kick. Nani stays down, free kick to Manchester United. Yeah, he just come in a bit late. What he does, he checks inside Nani more often than not on the left hand side of the field and he's got this tendency to roll over to accentuate it but it was definitely a foul it's going to be a free kick to Manchester United who started the better bright afternoon blue skies sun shining here at Old Trafford Manchester United five minutes played drawing nil-nil with Everton but they have a free kick on that left hand side as they play from left to right it's Nani just in from that left touch line O'Shea makes his way into the penalty area to join Evans Hernandez is there Outside the penalty area, you have Valencia and Anderson. Gibson also lurks, as does Rooney. In fact, it's played short to Rooney. First time shot takes a deflection, will go behind for a corner kick. Interesting, Everton's defence there. Six players in the, in the line. It's obviously something David Moyes has worked on. Just in a straight line, almost on the penalty spot there for that free kick coming in from that side. Well, Coleman was alert to the possibility of a short corner as Anderson had run towards Nani, but it's a corner from the left, which Nani will take. It's curling in and it's comfortably claimed by Tim Howard in his six-yard box. No Vidic there. You know, that's uh, one of the areas where they miss Vidic. He is dangerous at corners and free kicks. There was nobody actually went in there. Howard caught the ball with some comfort. They don't have a particularly good record at Old Trafford, Everton, but they are one of the form teams... Uh, Alan and myself were at the, 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 the Reebok Stadium back in February. They were abysmal that day. Certainly, David Moyes looked distraught in the, uh, in the rain as they were, they were beaten quite comfortably. But since then, they've responded well. They're unbeaten in seven games. They've collected 17 points out of 21. So they will come here full of confidence. They've been awarded a free kick, which is midway through the United half. And Baines, about 10 yards in from the left touchline, will take it left foot. It kills this one in plenty of pace, headed away by Gibson. Collected by Valencia, still deep inside his own half, and Valencia will win a throw off the legs of Billy Letinov. Now there's been a goal at Cardiff, Simon Mann. An absolutely stunning goal scored by Cardiff in the sixth minute. Jay Bothroyd with it from the right-hand side, powered the ball in with his left foot, 
from the right angle of the penalty area. Magnificent hit. Cardiff 1, Queen's Park Rangers 0. That is interesting, bearing in mind that Norwich had climbed above Nor uh, Cardiff on Thursday with that uh, comprehensive victory against Ipswich, but uh, victory today would take Cardiff back into second on 78 points, a point clear of Paul Lambert's side. Commentary on five live sports extra. There has been an early goal there. None, though, here at Old Trafford. Seven minutes played. It remains Manchester United nil, Everton nil, and this is Jimmy Armfield. Lovely ball played by Rooney there, who's just dropped a little bit deep once or twice. That was a lovely pass. I thought Hernandez it was actually appealing for a corner. Whether somebody got a touch along the way, it's hard to tell. But I don't think, really, he was quite ready for it. I think that was his problem. Howard with the goal kick to Baines, who dropped off to collect that ball midway through his own half. He pings it long with his left foot. Osman has gone forward. Beckford had made a run, dealt with, though, by the head of Ferdinand. Comes inside to Phil Neville, to Beckford. Nice control by Beckford, lays it off to Osman, opens up for an Osman shot, which didn't really have the power to trouble van der Sar. No, it's the first time, really, that van der Sar's touched the ball. And there was no power in Osman's shot there. But I was quite surprised Ferdinand dropped off Osman then, let him have a shot. Just from the edge of the boat. Opened up for him, didn't it? He did. Well, it was Ferdinand. He dropped off uh, completely. I was very surprised. Baines, who's had another excellent season for uh, Everton, heading the ball away. Valencia was anticipating him to head it back downfield, but he was taking no chances. So it's uh, a United thrower that Fabio, the left-back playing on the other side, at right-back, finds Valencia. Just ran away from Valencia from that throw, and Phil Neville was alert to the danger. Billy Letdinoff will clear it downfield. Played back in on the half volley by Ferdinand. Bounce took a, an extra kick off the surface, which is looking in extremely good, Nick, the, uh, the pitch here at Old Trafford. It's amazing when I think in the pictures, some of the pitches I used to play on, you know, in April, it was unbelievable. And look at this. It's like a bowling green. The grounds has got nothing to do this summer. <laughs> no, absolutely. Valencia looking for the through ball. A sliding block by Distant. Needed to be perfectly timed as well because Hernandez would have been in on goal. Distance clearance, headed forward. Rooney's cross, cut out by Hibbert. The right back was tucked in and covering well. Anderson's played the ball forward, blocked by Phil Neville. Beckford then tried to roll away from Ferdinand. He was caught by Ferdinand. Free kick against the Manchester United defender. Yeah, Phil Neville did well there. He is playing in that role just in front of the back four, as I suggested he might. Nice ball, won it early, played it forward, Ferdinand foul Beckford. Just giving Everton a little bit of respite. How many matches, um, minutes have we played now? Ten. Really nothing gone at Manchester United's goal so far. Just that half hit shot from Osman. Yeah, very tame indeed from, uh, from Osman. As Baines switches play out towards that right-hand side, but Everton are in possession. And this is uh, Neville out to Hibbert. The right back is in advanced position. Collecting the ball now is Coleman. Looks up, has time to send over the cross. And Fabio with a back pass to Van der Sar, and Van der Sar will clear on the edge of his six-yard area. Hernandez heads the ball in field, but only straight to Jagielka. Jagielka with a diagonal ball, looking for Billy Letinoff up against Fabio. And referee Peter Walton will give it in favour, and Everton throw. Deep inside the Manchester United half as they attack the Stratford end. There is no margin for error for Manchester United. Yes, they have that six-point cushion against Chelsea. But the door that is slightly ajar in the title race would certainly open up a little bit further if they were to drop points here against Everton. And there's been another goal. Cardiff against Queen's Park Rangers, Simon Mann. Well, this has been a magnificent start to the game. We played uh, less than 10 minutes. It's one all, Cardiff one, Queen's Park Rangers one. And Adel Tarab has scored the equaliser. A bit more subtle than the goal scored by Jay Bothroy, but a goal of quality from the left-hand side over the head of the outstretched hand of Bywater into the far corner from the left. It's Cardiff one, Queen's Park Rangers one. Commentary continues on five live sports extra and then also on sports extra later on, Spurs against West Brom. You'll be able to hear on our sister station. Here we are on five live, just uh, 11 minutes played. Manchester United nil, Everton nil. Everton, though, have a free kick on the left-hand side, about 10 yards in from the touchline. Manchester United have every red shirt back as Everton attack the Stratford end. It's Baines curling towards the far post. Rooney, of all people, who was to head the ball away. Retrieved by Coleman, lays it back to Hibbert, pushed forward by Hibbert. And it was... Uh, Billy Letninoff, who was struggling with his balance, it seems, just couldn't collect that ball to his feet. And Manchester United clear for an Everton throw. at Hibbert with, quickly takes on that far side, back towards Neville, inside to Jagielka, right side of the centre circle 
across the halfway line to Baines. Forward now to Osman on this near side, the left. Osman will go back to Baines. Infield now to Neville. Playing in midfield over the halfway line. Looks for his options. Has to wait. And then Feins finds Baines in close attendance. But under pressure from Valencia, Baines has to go back. Distan now is being harried by Hernandez. Good work rate from Manchester United, but Everton go infield. And now with Jagielka, short forward baller on the ground to Rodwell, gets it back from Jagielka. Patient play by Everton. As Osman looking for Coleman on that right-hand side, but United giving them no time and no space whatsoever. As Dundee United increased their advantage at Tannadice, Dundee United 2, Kilmarnock nil here, no goals at Old Trafford. Jimmy Armfield. Yeah, it's one or two passes from Everton now, just getting a little bit more confident, I think, than they were initially. I think as much as anything else, that'll please David Moore. He's a bit more comfort in the game. Also give a little bit more space for United as an attacking force. The Everton are going to go forward and show some ambition. And here are United coming forward and Rooney playing the ball to Nani. Nani left-hand side of the penalty area. Checks, waits, looks up. Nani gets the shot away. But you can't help but feel the, the chance was maybe lost as he hesitated. And in the end, it was straight at Howard. Lovely pass by Rooney to Nani. And really, it wanted playing him from the byline. And he took it inside, coming on the left side, remember, onto his right foot. He was looking for a shot himself. And really, he made a mess of it. Decent game. Manchester United nil, Everton nil. Here's Evans coming out from the back now for the home side. Out to O'Shea. Playing at left back. And then he collects the ball in field. Short, square ball towards Rooney. Rooney, good ball towards Anderson. Anderson tried to slip it through towards Hernandez. It was blocked. Nice little back heel by Rodwell. They try and alleviate some pressure on him. And Everton will bring the ball away. It's carried towards the halfway line by Osman, who was fouled by Fabio. That'll be a free kick to Everton just over the halfway line. Nil-nil. Yeah, there's no outman on the left-hand side. Normally it's Baines, that's it, what Everton we're talking about here. Everton normally have Baines coming down there, but with Valencia playing wide and staying wide, Alex Ferguson's obviously done this. It's just making Baines think again before he starts trotting off down the left-hand side. When Osman got the ball there, he had no support player. 14 minutes played on five live. Baines with the throw up towards Beckford on the edge of the area, over his head and straight through towards Van der Sar. And David Moyes turns away in disappointment at the distribution from that free kick for his side. He likes to get forward, Baines, you know, he always looks confident when he's going forward and he's got a lot of time. Anderson to O'Shea. O'Shea at left back, strong run. Charged down by Hibbert, they appeal for handball to the crowd, it goes behind for a corner to Manchester United, which Nani quickly runs over towards that far side as United play from left to right to take. Hernandez waits by Howard inside the six-yard area. O'Shea now makes a run. So it's Evans who makes a run. O'Shea's in the six-yard box as well. Rooney's also in there. Anderson jogs into the penalty area as well. There's only Gibson and Valencia who are outside the penalty box. Every other Everton player is trying to match up a red shirt inside a crowded penalty area. But we're having to wait because Fabio is getting some treatment off the field of play at the moment. So temporarily they're down to ten men in Manchester United. Nani kills on the free kick. O'Shea's header as he runs away from goal, gently drops over the crossbar for a goal kick. Nil nil. I can never quite see the point of getting all the players back into the penalty area. Everton did it then. I always think, you know, all it does, it crowds it even more. And there's no out, man. If, when the, if the ball goes out, it goes out to one of the opposition and it immediately will come back. And all your team then are trying to realign themselves. From the goal kick from Howard voice of Jimmy Armfield with us here on uh, on Five Live on this almost like a summer's afternoon rather than uh, spring. Glorious day. Still no goals though. As Baines with a throw on the left. Little flick there by Billy Letinoff. A deft little touch. Didn't really have a purchase on it and it was picked up by Fabio. And now Anderson out towards O'Shea on that far side. Nanny just in from the touchline on the left. Finds Anderson. Anderson looks up, comes in field. Hernandez drops away from Jaggy Elka. Rooney's behind him. Here is Rooney now. He had to retreat two or three yards before picking out Fabio on this right hand side. Valencia now comes in. Bain sticks with him. Always mindful of where Valencia is. Valencia steals a yard away from Baines. Up against Baines. Baines trying to block that route to goal. And it cannons away off the shield of that chest of Baines and out for a corner kick for Manchester United. Yeah, since Valencia come back, of course, you know, he's, he was out for such a long time. Since he's come back, he's given 
Alex Ferguson, another little arm down this right-hand side, and he's done well, I think. Anderson to take the corner. On the right for Manchester United, headed away by Distan, strikes an Everton player, still inside the six-yard area. Evans was making a nuisance of himself, and Distan will volley the ball away. Yeah, it's belted right down to the other end of the field. Ferdinand picks it up really at leisure. That's what I was saying about, you know, when you have all your players back in the box. It's a long way for the forward players like Beckford, you know, to get back in contention. This is Coleman now for Everton. Rodwell forward to Osman. Was he caught by Johnny Evans? Osman has stayed down. Play continues with uh, Nani carrying the ball and then laying it out towards Valencia coming in now off the right touchline Hernandez and Rooney are in the penalty area it's pulled back to Gibson shot from a good 25 yards out strikes Neville out of play it goes for a throw Osman's on his feet no need for the physio as play continues Fabio from the throw towards Ferdinand out towards O'Shea it's intriguing isn't it the game the way it's set Manchester United yeah, having the majority of the possession Everton working hard. Yeah, a bit of game of chess going on, really, defensively by both teams, you know. Started off with, you know, this business of Neville staying just in front of the back four, depending on where Rooney has been and so on. And it's uh, it's right through it's right through the team's Baines. You know, he's not been going forward quite as much, you know, because he's got Valencia tucked out on this side. But uh, it is intriguing. Here's Hernandez. Muscled off the ball by Phil Neville. And then Coleman lays it to Hibbert, who exchanges passes with Neville before the right back. Again, because of the pressure that Nani was placing on him, wasn't able to clear the ball away properly first time, does do and succeed the second time as Ferdinand steps forward out of defence to head it forward. Jaggy Elka has given it away, that was a little bit sloppy. Manchester United now can come forward. Here's Valencia. Valencia thought about the shot, lays it out towards Rooney. Rooney drills it in from the right hand side. Jaggy Elka redeems himself with a clearance. Manchester United just starting to turn the screw. Still nil nil here at Old Trafford on five live. Rooney with the outside of the right foot towards Anderson. 18, nearly 19 minutes played. Anderson comes forward, points with his index finger of his right hand is where he's going to play the ball. And then finds Nani inside to O'Shea. O'Shea shot goal kick I didn't know whether it was a shot or whether he was trying to give it to the goalkeeper then, he's had no power on it and of course he's he's not a left footed player, he really is a utility man O'Shea but he's done well for, for Manchester United, he's played right back central defence, he's playing left back today holding player in centre midfield I wouldn't think left full back will be his favourite position What is remarkable though about this Everton run of uh, unbeaten in seven games is that you know, the last few matches, they've been without players such as Cahill, Arteta, right. Sahar and Fellaini, which is great testament, I suppose, to the work that David Moyes has done when you're missing so many key players for Everton. Yes, he's done well. He's done a very good job, David Moyes, in my opinion. Here's Osman. Had to stretch for that ball. Did he pick up a knock in the process? No, he's eventually back to his feet. Here he takes it high on the chest, brings it under control. That struck his hand. The referee, though, has played the advantage, Peter Walton. Good refer refereeing that to uh, let the game flow. So 20 minutes played. It is still Manchester United nil, Everton nil. What's the latest, though, between Cardiff and Queen's Park Rangers in the Championship? Simon Mann. Well, we played for 90 and a half minutes. It's still Cardiff won, Queen's Park Rangers won. Those two excellent goals, firstly by Jay Bothroy for Cardiff and then Adel Tarap with a floater for Queen's Park Rangers. Cardiff had other chances as well. Bellamy was in the clear on the left, just pushed a bit wide, then his shot was pushed away by the goalkeeper. Burke was wide from a good position and before the goal, Whittingham was in behind the Rangers' defence. Great chance, too close to Kenny. Cardiff won, Queen's Park Rangers won. Really good atmosphere here and a good game. Good work by Fabio Taruni, then it's Hernandez. Hernandez with a cross, took a deflection. That was a good take in the end by Tim Howard. There was a little bit of spin on the ball, but it was an excellent play, first of all, by Fabio, deep inside his own half, combining well with Rooney to set up that latest Manchester United attack. Still 0-0. Yes, well, it was good, nice and sharp, and you described it perfectly, but Everton be annoyed, or David Moyes will be with Billy elected off. I mean, see, he had time there, and I don't know what he was doing with it, and he lost the ball. Fabio took it off him, and Manchester United got in a very dangerous position. They might have done even better. Just in case you need reminding, the significance of that game at Cardiff is that Queen's Park Rangers win, they'll be promoted, and commentary will be able to hear on five live sports extras. Here is Coleman coming forward for Everton. Still goalless here at Old Trafford. Chips the ball into the penalty area. It's a timely header away by Fabio, because just running in behind him was Billy Letinoff, and Billy Letinoff may well have winded the, uh, the young Brazilian who's gone down inside the United penalty area. 
Yes, he's... Uh, I tell you what I can't understand, and I think they've got to sort out just while uh, he's going to get some treatment here. When players get injured, when does the referee stop the game and when does he not? They should be for head injuries and so on. We saw a moment ago, we saw Osman lying down there for about a, a minute. Like Manchester United didn't kick the ball out of play, so he doesn't get treatment. I think this... Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But Osman, though, did eventually get to his feet, didn't he, whereas Fabio has stayed down. I didn't know you can't get to his feet. You don't know that, really, do you? I'm trying to say the, the difficulty is really for referees as much as anything else is. It's, the, it's this decision of when players kick the ball out of play when another player is injured. I'm not, I'm not, not absolutely sure, you know, what is the right thing to do there. I mean, we've got the respect thing and so on. Um, obviously, we've got to think about any player being injured. I'm not talking about that. That's, par that's paramount importance. What I'm saying is, look at him, he's walking off now. Yep. Do you think he's going to continue? I would think he would do. He's back to his feet. It's nil-nil. We're he's midway through the he's first trotting, half. He's trotting round the ground, if you look now. He's actually trotting. I think the point is, it's, it's just this thing. It just concerns me a little bit. I've been to matches, you know, where some players will kick the ball out of play if somebody lies down and others don't. Once clearing up. Here's Alan Green to take you through to the break. I think one of the problems, Jimmy, is that... Uh, Frankly, we can't trust too many players. Too many of them feign injury. And it's in the referees' minds as well. So difficult as, uh, for the ref. The oppositions. Anyway, you know, United are dominating the game, but Hart has not had a meaningful save to make. They need to do better than this, the league leaders. Still nil-nil here at Old Trafford in wonderful April sunshine. Here's Baines for Everton. Forward to Billion Edden up, Billion Edden off. Uh, I thought he got away from Fabio. Does eventually. Gets it back to Neville. Neville lays it to Jagielka. Just uh, ahead it and to the right of the centre circle. Now it's Hibbert. Hibbert with a cross into the United box. Cleared on the volley by Fabio. And here's the one player he is on form, Rooney. That's the one player for Manchester United on form, Rooney. Good pass forward to Hernandez. Poor from the Mexican. Giving it straight back to Everton. Billy Lednock from the Everton left. Flicks it towards Beckford, headed away simply by Evans. And here's Fabio. 24 minutes gone. Manchester United nil, Everton nil in that critical game in Wales. Cardiff won, Queen's Park Rangers won. And Dundee United 2-0 up against Kilmarnock in the SPL. Here's Evans. Evans back to uh, Rio Ferdinand. Vidic rested today. He's watching the game from the director's box about oh, 10 yards to our left. Hernandez for Manchester United to Anderson the Brazilian on towards Hernandez again Jagielka caught there Hernandez into the penalty shoots from an acute angle and is pushed behind by Hard for a corner yes that was a good smart move by Manchester United Hernandez quick he was so quick in fact that none of the Manchester United players could get up in support of him and so he tried a shot from a very difficult angle I think he might have just sneaked in on the near post whatever Howard's put it behind for a corner which Nani will take from the left on the far side of the field. Manchester United with his corner and Everton again have got everybody back defending it in their penalty area. Poor corner by Nani, headed away by Hibbert. Here's Gibson. Gibson on to Valencia. Valencia, uh, low cross, poor cross, cleared on the half volley by Distan and here's Osman for Everton. To the captain, Phil Neville. Back now to Baines and Baines slashes the ball upfield, straight onto the head, the forehead of Rio Ferdinand, who dispatches it back into the Everton half, at least temporarily. But here's Hibbert to Rodwell. Rodwell to Hibbert again. And it's played down that right side towards Beckford. Uh, Ferdinand's across. Ferdinand uh, makes the interception, but it's not a great pass forward by uh, the acting captain today. It's cleared upfield. There's a, a foul there by Coleman. And the referee, having decided that Manchester United actually didn't have the advantage in the end, brings the ball back for the free kick. Yeah, I think initially I think he was waiting to see if there was an advantage as much as anything else. He's had a word with Coleman, but uh, I think he he actually was thinking about blowing up for the first foul. 19 minutes to half time, nil nil at Old Trafford. Won't do. Uh, here's Gibson to Evans, and Evans just up to the halfway line. Uh, on to Nanny, back now to Anderson. Rooney's playing in the hole and is seeing a lot of the ball. He sees it now, gets it back to Gibson. Uh, Hernandez is the out-and-out -out striker for United. They've got genuine width. Nani down the left, Valencia down the right. 
but they haven't probed Everton that much so far. Here's Anderson to Nani, who's come in from the flank in a central position now. Tees up the shot for Gibson. Gibson's shot well wide. Yes, Ed. We've seen Gibson, Alan, and we score some terrific goals from around the edge of the box. I think he's a tendency when it gets comes to him at that area. That's the one thing he had, thought he has in his mind, and he had then he had options out on the right hand side then Valencia. But uh, you know when he gets there, he's had a little bit of success from that point. That one good ten yards wide. Manchester United beaten in the FA Cup semi-final this day last week by Manchester City, and then the draw on Tyneside on Tuesday night. So they've stuffed a little bit last couple of games to say the least two matches without a goal hard with the goal kick for Everton headed back by Ferdinand and then it's Jagielka's head that dispatches it back to the American goalkeeper once more a hard uh, waving his players upfield or further upfield uh, at the moment Billy Ledenoff is pushing further forward than Osman in fact Osman's back on the halfway line the ball's down the left side though with Baines Baines back to Distan and Distan squeezes the pass down the left touch line Beckford's woeful control ball's out of play for the throw in yeah he's, he's got that long roll up there it's not easy for him you know he's he's a box player really Beckford that's what he's at his best he's had, nothing's come his way just yet he hasn't touched the ball for a while so when it comes there he doesn't quite get the control right Fabio takes a throw in uh, to Gibson back to Fabio who hits it upfield at least into the centre circle Jackie Elka meets it for Everton Hibbert on the far side the right full back back to Jagielka who's had a few awkward moments against Hernandez particularly against the Mexican speed and he was hustled into a poor pass forward Inside. and now it's played to Hernandez who's offside I was right in line there wasn't much in it but he was just he went too early uh, but uh, it was a good pass it's just that you're right Alan that's the, the one thing you know they've had a little bit of a problem with Everton is Hernandez's pace he's very good he times his runs normally very well he just went that little bit early there the key figure though you're right Rooney is the key figure because he's the one who's setting the play up between the midfield and the front players he's been so good in that role of late Rooney you don't good see play. him his vision replacing Paul Scholes in midfield eventually you know, even Such Newcastle, a good player. In midweek, his vision, it's his vision, you know, it's, it's terrific. He's, out, he's had that, he's always had it, but of course now he's got the technique as well, really, to go with it. Uh, 16 minutes to half time, it's still 0 0 at Old Trafford. You're listening to Five Live in the BBC coverage of the Barclays Premier League. Uh, oh, Jackie Elka's ball, that was awful. Uh, not having the best of games, Phil Jackie Elka, hitting that one straight out of play, and it's a throw in to Manchester United. Fabio. Uh, Surprisingly, at right back, O'Shea at left back. Yep. You'd have thought it, was, it would be the other way maybe, around. Maybe so. He'll have his reasons. Yeah, maybe. So I think this between we we made. I think we've made this point before. I think Rooney. I think his best role is when he's in that sort of midfield central area where he is he manoeuvre himself around. Yeah, who, pick, play, who picks him up? Come and join up front. Yeah. You know, when he played in the World Cup as a front player, I can't see it. He's easier mark there. A player who's got talent needs to be on the ball, you know, and being used, being able to read the game, put the passes about. When he's free, he can do it. Gibson back to Ferdinand. Ferdinand on to Fabio, the right back. David Moyes has hardly sat down from the position in the technical area, uh, encouraging his players who are doing quite well at the moment. Nil nil. Here's Rooney. Rooney on the on this. Good shot. Good save by Hart. Excellent save, good move. Rooney Hernandez struck it well. Good save by Howard. United still got the ball though. Nani just to the left of the penalty area, crosses uh, left footed. It's uh, blocked by Coleman and it's going to be a corner to Manchester United. I think that was United's best move. Easily, easily. It was quick, decisive, and it was a good save too by Howard. Nani to take the corner. Uh, Anderson went short and then changed his mind. It's Nani playing it in right footed. Evans went to meet it, didn't make any contact. Punch clear by Hard. And then there's Gibson. I, uh, was that a shot or a, a pass? See, that's Either what I'm way, saying. Wide. I just said a moment ago. When he gets the ball in that area, he's got one thing on his mind. Shooting it go. That's all he you does. Know what I mean? The ball came to him awkwardly then, a little bit on the volley, you know. He could have pulled that down, look around. That's going to be his problem here. Because the, as soon as he gets in that area, the crowd shouts, shoot, you know, because they've seen him hit some real belties. But uh, really, as Alan told you, that was way off. Uh, the goal kick was taken short, but then Baines plays it back to Hard. Hard's clearance upfield. 
uh, Rodwell's not involved in the game. Jimmy, you know, I look at Rodwell, who, who gets rave reviews. I look at Henderson at Sunderland, who gets rave, rave reviews. And yet I look at them, you know, in the flesh, so to speak, and they're not that good. Both of them are a lot to learn. Well, they're, they're, they're both on the learning curve. You know, people with tendency to write them too early. I was making that point to Mark Chapman earlier. He's still on a learning curve. Oh, bad altogether. mistake by Hibbert. Balls with Nani. Nani sprinting away from the fullback on the far side. Rooney's held back. Arm aloft. He wanted the ball. It wasn't played anywhere near him, but it is a corner to Manchester United off Bill Neville. This time he's right. He's appealing. He should have had a free kick there. Hernandez fouled him as he was running back, and he's got away with it. Corner's taken short to O'Shea. Back to Nani. Uh, on the edge of the penalty area. Crosses in deep towards Rooney. He never left the ground. Headed away by Dista. Control from Valencia. Valencia taps it back to Anderson. Anderson about 35 yards out. On to O'Shea in the far side of the field. The fullback had come up for the corner. O'Shea's cross into the penalty area, but there's no obvious height there for United. And Distan heads it clear. And away further by Coleman. Uh, Beckford passes back to his goalkeeper. Seemed a strange choice that. A hard slice the clearance. And it crosses the halfway line. Ferdinand beats Beckford in the air. And here's Neville. On to Billy Ledenoff. Nice touch to Rodwell. Uh, Rodwell's touch uh, initially not great. In fact, it wasn't great. Full stop. He lost the ball. And here's Rooney. Rooney to Hernandez. Lovely pass. 12 minutes to half time. 0 0. Hernandez approaching the penalty area. Trying to take on Distan. Uh, get the cross end, but it hits Distan and it's behind for the corner. Yes. A couple of nice touches from Rodwell, but then he lost the ball. And. Uh, Manchester United coming on the break Rooney out to Hernandez good challenge in the end by Distan it's won a corner kick for Manchester United United are on top at the moment the corners from the United right Anderson's going to take it left footed uh, there it goes played deliberately back to Gibson Gibson chips it into the penalty area where it's headed away by Rodwell that was a rehearsed move but in those circumstances you almost think it's certain that Gibson's going to shoot he crossed, and that was equally ineffective on this occasion. Here's Neville, midway inside his own half, onto Osman. Osman, just simple pass to the left to Baines, and Baines, that's a good ball down the left touchline. But Billy Ledenoff uh, took his eye off the ball. I think he was looking for the defender, and in the end, he's fortunate that it's a throw into Everton. He's a bit, I think, uh, the Russian, I think he's a bit lightweight. Well, what do you, he's a bit Frightened. enigmatic. I mean, he scored a fabulous goal at Wolves, I don't know if you saw it, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I saw him, you know, once at Everton. He got a goal out of nothing, but he does so many things that are they're almost immature at times. Uh, Rooney finds Nani onto a share in the far side of the field. Uh, a little over ten minutes to go in the first half here at Old Trafford. We're still waiting for someone to score. Here's Nani um, rolling the ball onto his right foot. Low cross into the near post, where it's gathered comfortably by Hard. There's much more threat in Manchester United's play with the two flank players, Nani on the left, Valencia on the right, Hernandez up front with his pace and Rooney coming up just behind, you know, much more threat altogether. If it carries on like this, you would imagine that, you know, the weight of pressure might eventually tell. I think Everton have got to get one or two shots at the goal. They've had no shots at, at all. Osman to Beckford, just to the left of the penalty area, the United penalty area, trying to take on Evans. Uh, Big Evans. Uh, Beckford goes down. He thinks he was fouled there, but I think Peter Walton was in an excellent position. He judges there was no infringement and certainly not a penalty kick. Here's Baines, though, as Everton picked up the stray clearance from Manchester United. Billy Ledenov. Baines again. He wants the Russian to make himself available, and he finds Billy Ledenov for the pass. Now it's back to Jagielka. Jagielka onto Rodwell. Jagielka again. Everton with plenty of players in attacking positions here. Hibbert crosses from the right. It's a glancing header on. And well, I'm not sure Valencia knew what he was doing there. Certainly didn't know there. As Bill Ledenov crossed the ball, he appeals for handball against Fabio. Uh, it's not. And it's been another goal at Cardiff. Simon Mann. And Cardiff are back in the lead 10 minutes before half time. Ball in from the right hand side by Bothroy. Seemed to hit the hand of a Queen's Park Rangers defender. No matter, Bellamy was there to slam in the loose ball. Cardiff 2, Queen's Park Rangers 1. Here, nine minutes to go in the first half at Old Trafford. Manchester United 0, Everton 0 on five live. Anderson for United. Running away from Rodwell. Anderson then checks. He's in the centre of the Everton half now. A little pass back to Gibson. And now Nani, who'd come in from the left flank, onto Rooney. Rooney's dipping shot, didn't dip quickly enough, and it's over the crossbar. 
As soon as Rooney gets the ball, there's one or two players, you know, scramble round him. Of course, one or two of them, of course, will have played him. But I think Osman, for example, will have played with him at, uh, at Everton. But uh, he's been the mainspring, really, for Manchester United. He just got underneath that one, put it over the top. Uh, Dundee United 3, Kilmarnock 0 in the SPL. Uh, Cardiff, as you just heard, leading Queen's Park Rangers 2-1 in a match that if Queen's Park Rangers win, they'll be promoted to the Premier League. Baines now, under pressure from Valencia. Valencia pushes him aside, gets away with it, pass back to Nani. Nani's shot actually hit Hernandez, and it's behind for a goal kick off Valencia. How did they not score there? No, what a chance that was. What a chance. There was a bit of a scramble to start with between Valencia and Baines, and Baines actually... He was nudged over, but the point is that he was actually caught on the wrong side. He should have been on the goal side of Valencia, and he wasn't. Valencia was fairly paced, and when the ball came over, I thought it was a certain goal, but somehow Everton scrambled that away. That was the best chance. Seven and a half minutes left in the first period. Manchester United nil, Everton nil. Uh, Anderson with a header to Rooney around whom most things are happening. And that's a good ball forward by Valencia to Hernandez on the far side. Hernandez just to the left of the penalty area. Rooney makes a late run into the box. The cross was played behind the England striker and Baines should clear it and does clear it comfortably to Billy Ledenov. Uh, a poor pass from the Russian. Uh, Beckford does well to win it back for Everton. Finding Rodwell. On to Phil Neville. Uh, Neville. Now to Coleman. Coleman's been quiet as well. Well, he has. They've been sort of occupied, you know, dealing with the wingers. That's the problem that Manchester United have given them. Nan is keeping him back there. Dundee United 4, Kilmarnock 0. You see, remember this point I mentioned earlier about Billy Etten... Billy Etten... Well, call him Billy. Billy. Just call him Billy, that'll do. You know, how he does things that are just uncomfortable at times. And I saw David Moyes then, you know, when he gave the ball away. Don't know, don't know why he did, he's offside. You know? Well, Rooney's after it. Hard came, retreated. Rooney gets to the ball, into the penalty area. Looking to squeeze the ball. Back for Hernandez. Picks the wrong pass. And Everton partially clear. That should have been a goal. Well, it should. Yeah, Rooney just delayed long enough, really, to let Everton get players back. So I'll give Everton credit for that. But initially, it was Hernandez who was offside, not Rooney. There's O'Shea. Back to Anderson. That at least uh, gets the crowd to cheer. They haven't had much cause to cheer in the first half, the United fans. Six minutes to half time, nil nil. Uh, poor pass from Nani, intercepted by Neville, and uh, Neville's attempted clearance hits the Portuguese and rebounds out of play for a throw in. Well, we've played almost 40 minutes, and Van der Sar has not had to make a save at all, has he? No. He's, I don't think he's, he's hardly touched the ball. Manchester United, you know, all the play has been, you know, in Everton's half. And they've had two chances in the last sort of six minutes, I would say, where they've got away on the right-hand side, which they've not taken advantage of. I think Everton will feel it's vitally important for them uh, to keep it nil-nil to half-time. Crucial as they can. Uh, here's Valencia. Valencia uh, holding off Baines and then passes back to Evans. Five minutes to go half-time and five live. Manchester United nil, Everton nil here at Old Trafford. Nani to O'Shea, back to Nani again, midway inside the Everton half and moving in from the left side, on to O'Shea for the third time, this time the pass goes back to Rooney, uh, Rooney's tackle, lost it initially and then as the pass is played forward by Anderson, it's away from Rooney and Baines clatters the clearance into the uh, crowd on this near side of the field, the south stand. Yeah, so they're under the cosh at the moment, they can't get out can't get out at all. Baines was just glad to clear that ball. I think Everton could do with a fit Tim Cahill. Badly missing him. He's on the bench today, Cahill. Uh, might well be making an appearance, obviously, in the second half. Here's Gibson uh, to Anderson. And Anderson scurries forward. Rooney's to his left. Valencia's to his right. Pass goes to Valencia. Back to Fabio. Anderson. Fabio again. This is good football. And then uh, Fabio's pass. I think he felt that Hernandez was going to run into the space the Mexican didn't and the ball's back with hard yeah just didn't read it there Hernandez as much as anything that's the first time Fabio's really got you know onto the edge of the box of the Everton box we're talking about he's uh, he's a confident little lad Beckford couldn't control the ball and Anderson just sweeps it upfield and it's straight through to hard South American contingent uh, 
the enforcer today with, with Anderson and Fabio. A few around. A few around. Hard. Uh, from North America. With the ball on the edge of his penalty area. Actually, I just think United are, are rather quiet. And I, I don't think there's a particular urgency about their play. There will be in the second half once Sir Alex gets hold of them at half time. Well, I think they've got a. It's a warm day, but the point is, you know, they've had so much of the ball and uh, there's been a lot of running around the field. They've had two or three, what I would call, pretty good chances. And uh, consequently, they've, they haven't made anything of them. Here's Neville on the far side for Everton, attacking the Stretford end. Uh, Neville, uh, a couple of step overs from Phil Neville. And then he slips. Mm. Oh, dear, that's embarrassing. And what's the, the flag was being waved by the assistant on the far side, but play continues. And it's with Rooney. Uh, it was so beautiful from Phil Neville, and then he slips in his backside. Yeah, it didn't oh look dear. as good then, did it? <laughs> <laughs> Anderson to Rooney, and Rooney gets away from Osman, and then ran the ball straight to Hibbert. He finds Osman. Osman now to Coleman on the far side of the field. Um, in League Two, it's Hereford nil, Shrewsbury one. That was a one o'clock kickoff. So how long have they been playing? About half an hour, something like that. And we've been playing nearly 43 minutes. It's still Manchester United nil, Everton nil. Everton haven't won at Old Trafford for almost 19 years. Well, there's a few, few not won at Old Trafford for there's a few Fittich years. There's Fittich and Owen Hargreaves. He's going on, is he? Fittich uh, <laughs> would love to come on. Uh, Tackle by Anderson on Billy Ledenoff, and the ball squirts out of play again. Uh, Park and Fletcher also amongst the non-playing contingent another in the director's box. Another 200 million gone down the stairs. <laughs> uh, throw in by Everton I can't see because they're also moving standing up in the directors but that's how kind of them clear off do you know the first half still being played folks the ball up towards Jackie Elka who beats uh, Hernandez they both fell over and the pass by Neville to Coleman on the far side of the field Coleman now to Beckford and Beckford was fouled there by Evans um, no signal from the referee that he'd seen that and Manchester United have the ball again it's definitely a foul by Evans on Beckford Here's Gibson to O'Shea. O'Shea now. Uh, moving slowly towards the Everton penalty area. Flicks the pass to the left to Nani. Nani now faced by Hibbert. Onto his right foot. Crosses in towards the near post. Jackie Elka with the header away. Runs to Gibson. Who finds Anderson. About 35 yards out. Rooney shows. Gets the pass. Rooney now moves forward. Shaped as if to shoot. And then he chips the ball uh, beyond Hernandez. And it's behind for a goal kick. And we're inside the last minute of the first half. Yeah, there was... Uh just a lack of movement in Manchester United's line then. Rooney picked the ball up right in the centre of the field, about 20 yards outside Everton's penalty area. In control, and uh, but really there was no real movement because Hernandez, who's done most of the running off the ball, he'd actually just come back from a 50-yard run. Uh, Old Trafford is quiet at the moment. And if, the longer it stays like this, the more they'll get anxious, the United fans. I don't think nil-nil is an acceptable result today for them. Still well, 45 minutes to go, oh folks. Yes, uh, oh, yes. Uh, a minute or two well, towards the, the end of really the first half. With the amount of play they've had, they wonder why they haven't got in front as much as anything. Yeah, that's a foul by Gibson on Rodwell. Um, the referee certainly spotted it very quickly. We've got a minute of added time. Free kick to Everton, 15 yards inside the Manchester United half. Everton playing towards the Stretford end uh, for the next minute. Neville takes the free kick, and it was played cleverly to Osman, Osman just to the left of the penalty area, Osman retreating steps one way then the other and Fabio was watching the ball, well done the full back he wasn't fooled by uh, Osman's antics and it's cleared now to Anderson Anderson up to the halfway line to Nani in the far side of the field Rooney joining in the attack, Hernandez is already up there Nani's at the ball, now inside the penalty area will he get the cross in, he delays he delays, he delays and he slips and this old Trafford surface is not as good as maybe it looks Pat Nevins forever going on about uh, what he thinks is a poor surface. Too many players slip on, uh, on the Old Trafford pitch. They do, they've got a tendency here. We've we mentioned this before, haven't we, about they do water the ground. Yeah, also, probably the tendency to wear blades and not studs, Jim. Well, there is doesn't that. help. We've had our minute of added time. Uh, the ball is with Beckford near side of the field. Back to Billy Ledenoff. And now Rodwell. And... Heaven only knows time. why we're carrying on. Uh, it is half time now, Jimmy. And I, I don't know. I don't think United are playing that well. 
they've had a lot of they've had a lot of possession. They've had two good chances, in my opinion. I thought the angle shot that Hernandez had earlier on might have, that was saved by Howard might have just spurred them on a little bit, but it hasn't. Hernandez had a one good effort. The best move of the match was passed by Rooney, and he finished it well. Good save by Howard. And then towards the end of the half, we had that chance where Rooney got on the right hand side. Nani really should have finished it, but Everton managed to get a foot there and put it away. But so far, nothing's gone at Van der Sar's goal. Manchester United, a lot of possession, but frankly, nothing to show for it. Yeah, and this scoreline will not do for the team that wants to become champions. Manchester United nil, Everton nil. Goalless at a half time then at Old Trafford. You've had a much better first half by the sounds of it at Cardiff. Simon Mann. Hugely enjoyable. We're in the second minute of three at the end of the first half. It's Cardiff 2, Queen's Park Rangers 1. Cardiff deserved their lead, but Rangers have played their part in a stirring game. We had two excellent goals inside the first ten minutes. A powerful shot from the right side of the box from Jay Bothroyd put Cardiff ahead. But four minutes later, Adel Tarab curled in a delightful equaliser. Cardiff responded, Bellamy and Burke had chances. Queen's Park Rangers came back. Forlan and Smith had headers and they were wide. Then Bellamy, ten minutes before half-time scored when the ball hit the hand of Connolly the ball was loose and Bellamy whacked in the rebound a few moments ago Sean Derry's shot was really well saved by Bywater away to his left hand side still playing Cardiff 2 Queen's Park Rangers 1 one game going on in League 2 at the moment this kicked off at 1 o'clock it's Hereford nil, Shrewsbury 1 uh, the latest from Edgar Street this is 5 live sport Mark Chapman live at Molyneux Wolves against Fulham our 3 o'clock commentary game this afternoon let's get a new update now here's Corian online at bbc.co.uk slash five live this is BBC radio five live two men have been arrested in Glasgow by police targeting people suspected of carrying out internet hate campaigns against figures connected with Celtic and Rangers they've been charged with sectarian breach of the peace the Strathclyde force says the operation is ongoing officers are expecting to target around 50 people who are thought to have posted comments online a man's appeared in court charged with terrorism offences after being detained by police investigating the murder of Constable Ronan Kerr in Omer. 33-year-old Gavin Coyle has been remanded in custody for four weeks. Funerals are being held in Syria for anti-government protesters killed yesterday and there are reports of fresh protests and at least five more deaths. Witnesses say shots had been fired at funerals in the suburb of Damascus. Leaders of the National Union of Teachers are warning of possible strikes this summer over the government's pensions plans. Members of the NUT will vote this afternoon on whether to ballot for industrial action. The writer and creator of Only Fools and Horses, John Sullivan, has died. He was 64 and had suffered a short illness. On the roads, one lane is closed on the M11 southbound and there are queues. It's after a crash between Junction 8 at Bishop Stortford and Junction 7 at Harlow. On the M32 southbound in Bristol, one lane is closed. It's because of a broken down car at Hambrook. That's Junction 1. In Leicestershire, on the M69 southbound, there are delays. The road is blocked after a serious crash between Junction 1 at Nuneaton and the M6. In East London, the southbound Blackwall Tunnel is closed until the early hours of Tuesday morning for roadworks. It's already causing long delays for the Woolwich Ferry. Clockwise, queues over the QE2 bridge, uh, bridge on the M25 from Junction 30 and for westbound the A13 and highway towards Tower Bridge and the Rotherhithe Tunnel, which is southbound only this weekend. Corey Allen, 5 Live Travel. This is 5 Live Sports with Mark Chapman. And we're still in the tunnel at Molyneux because Wolves against Fulham is our three o'clock game. Uh, joining me, Fulham assistant manager Mark Bowen. Uh, as a Welshman, first of all, I just have to tell you, Cardiff 2, QPR 1 at half time. Yeah, that was pleasing to hear that, Mark. Yeah, we just arrived at the ground here and uh, we had it on in the court, a little bit of commentary, but uh, hopefully they can see it through now and get the three points. Um, I don't, you might not have seen the Wolves programme uh, as yet, but they begin but with their column on Fulham saying each time when Fulham have, have got themselves into a bit of trouble this season, they found a way a little extra to keep their heads above water when the pressure is built up and now approach the final six matches in a position of relative comfort. <laughs> well, I don't know, but when they say each time they found us in trouble, yeah, we, we, had a, we had a difficult period around about Christmas time, but, we, you know, there was a firm belief in the camp around about that time that, you know, we, we were we were missing key players to our squad at the time through injuries. Bobby Zamora, Moussa Dembele, just, just two, if you like, but... Uh, and we were playing well enough and you know, you know what it's like Matt you see all the stats and you read all the stats and you get them all reported back to you on a Monday morning after games and even you know on the eye we knew we were playing well if you like but even looking at the stats we knew that we were doing okay lots of possession but couldn't 
quite created into actual goals scored. You know what I mean? So now the lads are back. We, we, we feel we're playing well and. Uh, We've been on that wood curve. We feel since since well, since the new turn, the new year, really. Do, do you then approach the, the last six games in, in relative comfort, or are you? All, what I mean, do you have a points tally to to be comfortable? We have a points tally that we we obviously keep, keep in house, if you like, for 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 one to get an actual uh, stick at the end of the season. But uh, no, I think uh, with, with the manager that, that the club's got, um, I think it's been proved through his through his managerial career that none of his teams tend to ease off. He won't let, allow that to happen, and uh, we tend to uh, go into the final months of the, tre- the season training perhaps that extra bit harder and putting more emphasis on on a on a real um, um, uh, desire if you like to go and get jobs done at the end of the season you know coming into the last few games so that that won't be allowed to happen and uh, you know we we, we firmly believe we'll finish the season on a strong note Mark Hughes gave a really interesting press conference yesterday and and spoke about the pressure of management at this time of the season is that the same when you're the assistant manager as well well, I, again, I've only ever been an assistant, so I can only come from my point of view. Yeah, it's, of course, it's a stressful job. I, I dare say it's a, a, a fair bit less stressful than, than the manager because you're at the sharp end of the, the stick, if you like, all the time. But, uh, you know, I think you're alluding to the situation with Gerald Hulley and, and I think everybody wishes him the best and speedy recovery. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the nature of the beast of the game we're in. It's, you know, go... Uh, points and, and, and certainly wins in the Premier League like gold us and you know the, there's a very thin line you know between success and failure you know as I say pro- probably a lot of it can depend on you know individual refereeing decisions on the day so I think that's that's you know bringing the refereeing situation to it as well that's why probably that man just tend to give him a lot of stick because your life depends on the, the, the reading of situations at times but I suppose when you're the assistant and when you have the close relationship like you have with Mark you're kind of keeping an eye on him as, as well as your players yeah I think so you, you, you know we're there you know the, the whole staff behind Mark are there to, to basically help him and advise him and try the best we can to take the pressure off at times I don't know I know how, how well that works I suppose you'd have to ask him that question the same as every other manager in the league but uh, yeah as I say it's uh, it's a stressful stressful time for everybody concerned but you know right from the start of the season you put yourself under pressure as a coach as, as a manager I think because you know you've got high standards and you want to win every single game you go into Bobby Zamora broke his leg in this corresponding pitch you, you, you mentioned getting him back you must be pleased with, with how he's come back <clears throat> yeah very much so uh, he, he's still getting a few little niggles Bobby I mean he was out for a long time and I mean I, I, I dare say we probably won't see him back to his, you know, his 100% best, possibly until the start of the next season when he's had a, a pre-season under his belt again, and he's had, you know, alluding to the fact he's had a, f- a few little niggles and stiffness this week as well. So, um, you know, it is a long process back for him because it was a, a very bad injury he had, but you know, we delight to have him back, and he, he'll play a major part from now on into the, the end of the season. I know you've got a lot to do, so I appreciate you joining us in the tunnel. Pleasure, uh, your players have already walked out to have a look at the pitch. If you're going that way, just be careful because the sprinklers are quite powerful. <laughs> yeah, they'll turn it on as they go, probably. <laughs> Mark, thank you very Cheers, much. Mark. Thank uh, you. Well, assistant manager uh, Fulham assistant manager rather Mark Bowen joining us Wolves against Fulham a uh, three o'clock game here on Five Live Sport let's uh, go to the Crucible shall we and get the latest on the world snooker here's Philip Studd where I've been watching a stirring comeback this afternoon from Antrim's Mark Allen. He really struggled in the early stages of his second round match against Barry Hawkins. Trailed 7-3, had to pit the next frame courtesy of a clearance to the black. But the left-hander, who's been receiving treatment of late for clinical depression and fought back valiantly to pit Matthew Stevens in the first round, well, he's put together a six-frame surge here to take a 9-7 lead into tonight's deciding session. 13 frames, of course, is the target. Already through to the quarterfinals today, Snooker's brand-new superstar, Judd Trump a 13-6 winner over Martin Gould but we're really gearing up here Mark for the showdown between the Rocket and the Magician it's O'Sullivan against Murphy who's accused O'Sullivan of being unprofessional this season no love lost it's a heavyweight contest if ever there was one and it's underway at 2.30 Still in the tunnel here at Molyneux now joined by uh, Wool striker Kevin Doyle uh, first of all how's the injury? Um, it's good. It's a good week I've had actually to be honest I've been out running this week um, it's been four weeks today since I did it so I was out running this week and we're aiming for um, the last two games of the season, whether we make it or not, I don't know, but that's, you know, at the moment we're on track for that. So um, that spurs you on, I suppose, given that it gives you a target Definitely, to try yeah, and aim yeah. for. You know, it was a bit up in the air for the first few weeks, you don't know when you're, you know, four weeks, eight weeks, you know, but now it looks, you know, we're getting to that stage where you can sort of start to predict how quickly it's going to be. What, kind of, what kind of watcher are you when you're injured? Not very good at all. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I love supporting the lads and all, but I just hate watching games when they're not playing. You want to be, you know, today the pitch looks on, but it's the best pitch has looked all season. Uh, it's a sunny day and you just want to 
you get that adrenaline and you want to be out there and then doing it and it's just so frustrating uh, to be watching I just saw you ca- you came out of the dressing room then so do you still feel involved on, on a match day do, does yeah, yeah. McCarthy make sure you're involved in everything definitely yeah you're you're welcomed into the dressing room um, you know for as long as you want to wish everyone well you don't have to you're not kicked out nothing you're, you're there and you know it's just a good thing and um, you hang around and see everyone and keeps you that a bit of adrenaline going keeps you you know wanting to be there where if you're away and you know away from all this you sort of forget about it a bit and maybe you wouldn't uh, wouldn't have that wanting feeling to get back as quick I don't know what it is this gives you that adrenaline to make you want to be back on that pitch as soon as possible why are you in this position given given some of the football you've played yeah. this season your performances against the the so-called big boys the big four the big five why are you in this position um, I don't know. You, you, I've seen you at a few games. You tell me. Um, <laughs> uh, I've been on the pitch, and it's hard to tell. Um, we've beaten the sort to some of the big teams, yeah, and then we've gone out the following week and lost the teams around us. We could never get a run going all season long. It was one win and lose a couple of win, big win to keep us alive and in in the shout, and then lose a couple. So, you know, we had a run uh, four, five, six games there last month, and it was looking very good. And then the international breaks we had a FA Cup break and international break in a row and it seemed to upset us in the last two games you know been our, probably our worst performance of the season we uh, played a, an interview with Matt Jarvis at the at the beginning of the programme and talked about him making his England debut this year yeah. as well um, as a front man give us an appreciation uh, of him well you know the way we well the way we've played a lot this season 4 5 one, so you're, I'm up front of my own and you know you're trying to hold the ball up and you see the likes of Jarbo speeding as he, as how fast he runs you know to be able to so you need people supporting you quickly and he you know fantastic at that he's got the ability to go both ends of his defending and attacking you know if you ask his full backs I'm sure they'll appreciate how he helps them out and, and vice versa for me you know to be able to have someone supporting you that quickly which has allowed us to play the 4 5 one, the two wingers supporting us and he's, he's exceptional and then to get you know he's, he's nicked a few goals and his deliveries from corners and set pieces you know last year he was probably just as good but didn't get the recognition but one thing I think he's improved since I've come here is his, is his deliveries are, are getting better all the time which um, you know really starting to show and we've, we've talked a lot certainly today already it was with Mark Byrne before and also the past couple of weeks about the pressure that managers are under at this yeah. time of year when you're in the relegation battle how do you feel as a player in the middle of this I mean do you find it difficult to sleep do you find it difficult to concentrate yeah. on other things you do you know because it's basically next four weeks going to determine you know a lot of things in the next uh, next you know year of your life so it is just, you think about it you try to put them to back your ma- mind but you know imagine this is what a player is thinking imagine what it's like for a manager it must be an absolute nightmare that's the one thing you know sometimes I think I'd love to be a manager but then when you see you know how, how it is you think God if you put yourself through that it must be you know um, you know you go grey early and lose a lot of hair early I reckon um, so it is, it's, it is stressful but um, you know it's stressful we're playing in the Premier League and we're in, we, have, we have a great life so in, in, in the wider scheme of things it's not really no don't mention the great hair thing to your manager I yeah or they're the losing it bit either <laughs> brilliant Kevin thank Here's you very man. much for Thanks joining us I hope you managed to watch it in relative comfort this afternoon thank you very much world striker Kevin Doyle let's get an update on the uh, county cricket shall we division 2 Steve Mays watching Northamptonshire against Essex yeah and a great morning for the second division leaders North Ants who are staring at a long day in the field and an odds on draw when they pitched up at 11 o'clock here this morning they picked up four wickets including Alistair Cook for 28 and Ravi Bapara for 5 Essex needing 106 to make North Ants bat again are 102 for 4 at Chester Street we've just heard that Sussex have beaten Durham by two wickets Luke Wells made 102 that's his first first class century Worcestershire set 288 to beat Warwickshire at Worcester are 18 for 1 back into Division 2 Glamorgan following on against Surrey of 44 for 2 and Middlesex needing 328 to beat Derbyshire at 216 for 6 Lee Westwood is keeping up the pressure on Luke Donald as both bid to become world number 1 Westwood has a 5 shot advantage after 3 rounds of the Indonesian Masters victory would see him regain his world number 1 spot if Donald fails to win the Herald Heritage in South Carolina, though Donald does actually lead that by one shot. One game going on in the SPL, Dundee United 4, Kilmarnock 1. Uh, here at Molyneux this afternoon, our commentary team will be John Murray and Tim Flowers. Afternoon to you both. Hello, good afternoon. Um, Tim, uh, hearing Kevin Doyle there and, and talking about the, the, the pressure of, of relegation, can you sympathise, empathise? Absolutely. I mean, the first two years of my career were here at uh, Wolves in the first team and we got relegated back on the bounce. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's not great news. And, of course, everybody wants to play in the Premiership. It is the division to play in, in world football. John, it's going to be a nervous afternoon, isn't it? Because as well as Wolves against Fulham, we, we've got Blackpool, Newcastle, Sunderland, Wigan. 
Yes, it is. And, uh, you know, something, I think when the weather's like this, it almost increases the pressure because it feels that the end of the season is ever so close. So I, I just think that actually adds to the sense of tension and nerves there are around games like this on days like this. Uh, that was short and sweet from both of you. We will hear more from John and Tim. Uh, I promise as we build up to the three o'clock games and full commentary here on Five Live Sport from Molyneux of Wolves against Fulham from three o'clock. But Everton are already back out at Old Trafford. Goals at half-time between themselves and Manchester United. Let's rejoin Jimmy Armfield and Ian Dennis. Thank you, Mark. You talk about a nervous afternoon. It could well be a nervous afternoon yet here for Manchester United if they don't get the goal to get the three points against an Everton side that are going to make two changes here at uh, the start of the second half. Tim Cahill is coming on for Billy Letinoff. Cahill won appearance in the last two months. He's missed the last three. And Beckford is the other change. And it's uh, Victor Anachibi who's actually coming on for, uh, for Beckford. So they're the, the two changes that uh, David Moyes has uh, has made at the start of the second half. Not surprised about Billy Letinov, the Russian who scored a fantastic goal against Manchester United, in fact, last season. It was uh, voted Everton's goal of the season, unable to produce a great deal here today. So, Anachibi for Beckford, Cahill for Billy Letinov, two changes for Everton, nil-nil then at the start of the second half here in the Barclays Premier League on Five Live. Everton in all royal blue, playing from left to right. Manchester United attacking the Stretford end in their red shirts and white shorts. And remember, Sir Alex Ferguson had made five changes. He'd rested Vidic ahead of this game. Van der Sar in goal, O'Shea. In fact, Fabio playing at right back, Ferdinand, Johnny Evans and O'Shea at left back. And then the midfield of Valencia, Gibson, Anderson and Nani, Hernandez and Rooney. And this is how Everton now line up. Um, Tim Howard, Hibbert, Jagielka... Distan and Baines, Coleman, Neville, Rodwell, Osmond, Cahill and Victor and Achibi. And I've just been told as well that um, Sir Alex thinks he's forgotten his glasses and he sent someone to go and get them from the tunnel. So Sir Alex Ferguson without his, uh, without his glasses, easily done of course, isn't it Jimmy? Must be, for people who forget things. <laughs> I'm always losing my glasses case. Yeah. That's because the glasses are on my nose, probably. The case, that's the one I'm always losing. But anyway, interesting, the changes, really. The experience, of course, Cahill, very important player to Everton. It'd be good to have him back for them. And uh, slightly different person coming in, Andy Chibi. Strong player. Manchester United, they posed questions of Tim Howard, but their former goalkeeper kept out Hernandez' low shot and then did well to beat away and also a Hernandez shot with a reflex save after a smart move. But it's still nil-nil. And Everton now with Anichibi bringing the ball down off the chest. He's a bulky young striker, of course, for Everton. has had injury problems. Ferdinand gets away with that. There's a little bit slop in defence. It cannoned away off Baines and was eventually cleared downfield by, by van der Sar. But Sir Alex Ferguson now in the technical area. Of course, he's... Completed his five-much touchline ban. This is his first game since then. He's there with uh, with Mike Phelan and his and glasses and glasses watching on. And as every minute ticks by, we'll just start to get a little bit more anxious as well because they will not want to drop points here against the, an Everton side who are looking to extend their unbeaten run to eight games in the Premier League. And Everton have worked hard, although they've created very little, in fact, absolutely nothing against van der Sar apart from that tame shot by Osman. They have worked hard against the Manchester United side that has been thwarted on a couple of occasions by Tim Howard. Yeah, Osman's dropped now back into the midfield area. Uh, and Rodwell sort of on the cent more central with Neville. Coleman out on the right for Everton. Sir Alex Ferguson in his programme notes, fully aware of the danger that Everton would pose as Hernandez collects this ball on the right-hand side, forward down that right touch line to Valencia, rolls it back to Fabio, playing it right back. Fabio sends over a curling ball, Rooney can't control it and Coleman will clear on the edge of the penalty area. Ferguson talks about how Everton have done exceptionally well, especially with the injuries of late, and how he says if Manchester United don't maintain maximum concentration here today, then they could come a cropper. 
Manchester United, six points clear of Chelsea and Arsenal, still being held by Everton. They have this imperious home record, of course. They've won 17 of their 18 home games. Only West Bromwich Albion have taken something away from Old Trafford, so they've collected the 52 points out of 54. Good job as well when you consider their poor away form, which was, uh, as Gibson looks for a ball over the top, Headed away by Baines on the run with Valencia running shoulder to shoulder. Picked up though by Rooney, midway through the Everson half. Sliding in was Baines, preventing Valencia from any space whatsoever. This is uh, Neville now, former Manchester United player. Osman, back to Rodwell. David Moyes just passed the ball out towards this right-hand side. And here is Hibbert, the right back, forward over the halfway line. Back to Rodwell again, the England under-21 international. Phil Neville, short forward ball to Cahill. He likes to get forward from, from midfield. A player to watch, certainly for United. Nil-nil. Osman, out to Cahill. Drifting out into space. Left-hand side. Urges the Blue Shirts to push on forward. Ferdinand clears with a toe end away from Baines. Anderson in front of the back four. An ambitious ball in the air, looking for Hernandez. United yet to get into any rhythm in this second half. Jimmy Armfield. Nice little move by Everton, I thought that. And it was a poor cross from Cahill in the end. And uh, really, Manchester United might have made a little bit more about it. But Everton had players forward. Cardiff 2, Queen's Park Rangers 1. Commentary continues on five live sports extra. The champagne might well have to be on ice. As far as Queen's Park Rangers are concerned, Manchester United... Looking for three points themselves here in the, the Barclays Premier League. Five minutes played into the second half. Here is Neville wanting to take a throw for Everton. He'll leave it for Jagielka. Jagielka along the ground to Cahill. Cahill into the penalty with his back to goal to Coleman. A little bit off balance with a left-footed shot. And it goes well, well wide for a goal kick to United. Yes, it was nice to lay up up to the front players. And just for a second, Manchester United were caught, I thought. But the shot's uh, off target. A little more composure about Everton's play so far in the second half. They've actually not scored on their last three visits to uh, to Old Trafford. As Alan was saying in the first half, they have to go back to August 92 since they actually last won in the, the Premier League. But when you consider that they're also playing Chelsea on the final day of the season, David Moyes' side could have a major say in the title race, particularly if they can continue to hold Manchester United here today. It would give Chelsea a massive boost ahead of their home game against West Ham at 5.30. Yes, it would. Bit unlucky there to concede a free kick. Nietzsche was running forward and all he's done was just, he just caught Fabio, who went down and stayed down. But uh, I don't think there was any intent of a foul, but it's given Manchester United a free kick. which Rio Ferdinand, 10 yards inside his own half, will just stroke back towards Van der Sar. Van der Sar quickly plays it forward to Johnny Evans. Can Everton continue to contain Manchester United as they search for the goal? Gibson towards Fabio, miscontrols the ball, it runs away from him, tries to win it back, goes in strongly on mm. Anichibi, mm. and Anichibi goes down, clutching his knee as the ball is played forward by Neville towards Coleman on this right-hand side. O'Shea has gone with him. The two Irishmen down by the corner flag. Coleman loses out to O'Shea. Does he get a second chance at it? Nani has doubled up on Coleman and a combination of Nani and O'Shea will work the ball away for Manchester United. And Nietzsche is back on his feet. That's a good ball from Anderson. Good control as well by Hernandez. He just waits. Hernandez outside the penalty. Looks for Rooney. Excellent defending by Jagielka. Running back, sliding challenge inside the penalty area because Rooney was in on goal. Just back in time, Jagielka, but it was good timing as much as anything else. Real chance for Manchester United there. Didn't quite open up the pace, so the pass was just a little bit short. Mike Phelan has just ordered Everett and Raphael to get warmed up as well for Manchester United. Eight minutes into the second half, still goalless here on five live. Ferdinand comes forward, the United captain, right of the centre circle, out towards... Fabio on that right-hand side, back to Ferdinand, under pressure from Cahill, has to turn around, just drops back inside his own half. Towards Evans, the Northern Ireland International will stroke the ball back towards Ferdinand, who's quite casual in possession, very relaxed, but not going anywhere, Manchester United. Anderson 
drops deep to collect the ball from Evans. Goes in very strongly once again. Well done, Coleman. Coleman, Coleman yeah. quickly on his feet. Did very well, Coleman, there. He didn't make any meal of it. The referees are judged that Anderson came sliding in with his foot up. He's got the yellow card. I'd actually thought Fabio was looking on the other side with the challenge on in each of it, but there we go. Everest going to be coming on for Manchester United. They'll be looking for that width down the, uh, the left-hand side just to try and stretch Everton because Everton have done well in this early stage of this second half. Nine minutes played, still nil-nil. Here's O'Shea. Toe ends the ball away. Evans goes in on Hibbert. The ball cannons away off Hibbert. Hibbert certainly wasn't going to shirk from that challenge. It'll be a goal kick. You can sense the urgency here from the Manchester United players as Van der Sar with a hurried goal kick, maybe a little bit too hurried, put pressure on his defence. Cahill then goes in on Ferdinand. Ferdinand a little bit theatric in his fall to the ground. And Cahill was shown a yellow card. Ferdinand was quickly on his feet. He was fortunate there, Van der Sar. He was. He was fortunate. But... Uh... A little bit more in Everton's game, isn't there, in this second half? A little bit more of a threat, but uh, Cahill, of course, he's a good competitor. Here is Nani. Nani to Hernandez. Outstretched left leg from Distan. Directs the ball away from the penalty area, and Distan again will sweep the ball clear forward towards Anit. And Ichibi leans into Ferdinand, gets away from the England international. Victor and Ichibi into the penalty area, still going, goes underground, and another challenge from Ferdinand. Was that a penalty? The referee, Peter Walton, is unmoved. Well, and Ichibi was running for a again. penalty. He was actually, what it was, and Ichibi, I thought, might have released it a bit earlier than he did, but the referee, he couldn't have been better positioned than that. He seemed to sort of leaned on him, didn't he, as much as anything else? You'd have seen it given sometimes. Certainly, had he had a better touch prior to that, then Anichibi would have been in on goal. He would. His first touch let him down, actually. But he was in. Much more of a contest, though, here in the second half from an Everton side who worked extremely hard in the first period to try and contain Manchester United. But the visitors are posing a threat in this second period. Nil-nil. Nanny for Manchester United. Left-hand side, midway through the Everton half, towards Rooney. Flag is raised, Hernandez was offside. Yes, I suppose the, the contention will be whether he actually pushed him, and to be frank, we're not in the best position to see that. We're sort of, we're not even, even sideways on, we're at an angle. But the referee could not have been in a better position than he was. But nevertheless, we're just looking at a replay now. He gave him a little bit of a nudge, certainly. He's coming in uh, on the left-hand side and Ferdinand gets his left arm underneath in Nietzsche's arm. So, well, on a good day, Everton might have been lucky there. He got the spot kick. It just required more composure from Nietzsche, didn't it? The first it? touch let him down. You're absolutely right. That change has happened, by the way. Evra has replaced O'Shea at left-back for Manchester United. 12 minutes into the second half here on Five Live. Still mm. Cardiff lead Queen's Park Rangers by two goals to one. Shrewsbury are leading at Edgar Street. Hereford nil, Shrewsbury won, and Dundee United convincingly beating Kilmarnock in the SPL. Gibson, short ball out towards Valencia. Valencia on the halfway line, plays it in the air. Jagielka with a header back, looping into the arms of Howard, who made those two important saves in the first half, throws it out towards Baines, Baines picks out Cahill, who's that link, isn't he, from the midfield to the attack for, for Everton. But he's lost possession, and this is Valencia. Valencia on the right-hand side, held up by Rodwell, has to turn, continues to run in field, and then lays it off towards Anderson, running onto this ball just outside the centre circle. Evra joins the attack on this near side, the left as they attack the Stretford end, Manchester United. Still no goals here on five live. Nani to Rooney. Rooney with his back to goal. Back towards Nani. Closed down by Neville. Bobbles away from Neville. Anderson keeps the attack going for Manchester United. Hernandez towards Valencia. Outside the penalty area. Valencia with a chip into the penalty area. Headed away by Hibbert. Comes down towards Gibson with a shot. Comes off Jagielka, who just threw himself in front of that right-footed shot from the Irishman. Corner kick to Manchester United. Nil-nil. Good defending by Jagielka. The ball came out to Gibson be about what 25 yards out all just to the left of center and he tried the, to dipping volley but Jagielka threw himself at the ball Manchester United got a corner 
And it's a corner down by the tunnel on this left hand side. Nani. Not a long run up, short run up in towards the near post. Headed away by Hibbert. Comes out to Rooney. Rooney's shot. Couldn't get it away. It was a good block by Neville. And this is Valencia. Asking far too much of Fabio on the overlap on that right-hand side. And Jagielka defended well, although his chip almost put his side back in danger. But Rodwell, under pressure from Manchester United, they haven't properly got the ball away at Everton. Now they have with Jagielka. That was a, a better clearance. Urged on by this Old Trafford crowd. Manchester United looking for the all-important goal. Nani, left-hand side. Coleman and Hibbert looking to double up on Nani. He's away from Coleman, works over the cross. And he actually takes a deflection into the side netting, much to the frustration of Tim Howard. Corner kick to Manchester United, 0-0. Yes, it was good cover by Everton again. They're competing very well, I think, Everton so far. Well, you expect that from this team. Another corner for Manchester United, which Nani... Slight incline as he takes the corner, actually plays it along the ground... And then Evans caught distant, and that'll be a free kick as we go to Cardiff against Queen's Park Rangers and Simon Mann. 11 minutes played in the second half, Cardiff 2, Queen's Park Rangers 1. No suggestion of a Queen's Park Rangers equaliser so far in the second half. In fact, Cardiff looked a bit more likely, Whittingham was over, and then Oliver Jana's goal-bound volley was blocked by Bradley or near the line. Cardiff 2, Queen's Park Rangers 1. And Kilmarnock is staging a little bit of a fight back at uh, Tannadice in the SPL. Dundee United 4, Kilmarnock 2. It's still Hereford nil, Shrewsbury 1 in League 2. Mm. Here an hour has been played. Ryan Giggs is warming up. Michael Carrick is warming up as Gibson wins the ball from Rodwell. Rooney looking for Hernandez. Slide rule pass towards Hernandez. Hernandez tries to cut it back. Good block sliding by Distan. Comes back towards Hernandez. Hernandez with a cross. Headed away by Baines. Anderson will try and pick up that ball in the sunshine. Midway through the Everton half. Still nil-nil. Anderson out towards Valencia. Right-hand side. Valencia away from Baines. Into the penalty area. Valencia still going. Stands it up towards the far post. Nobody is there. Coleman will clear for Everton. Anywhere, yes, to get it away. Just under a bit of pressure again. Everton. Rodwell again gave the ball away. And, uh, you know, that's what really set that up. They've had some good results on their travels of late at Everton. They drew at Chelsea in the FA Cup. They beat Newcastle and Wolves. And here they're holding the leaders, Manchester United. As Manchester United look to exert further pressure on this Everton back line here's Anderson Giggs and Carrick continue to limber up in front of us good ball out towards Nani on the left hand side up against Hibbert Evers on the overlap crosses into the penalty area though does Nani headed away by Jagielka loose ball picked up by Gibson quickly to Nani offering the width on this near side Nani coming in field now leaning into him was Coleman just trying to do enough to hold him off back out towards Everett on this left touch line Everett now runs in field up against Hibbert low ball into the penalty area Hernandez with his back to goal can't get the touch Everton will eventually clear through Phil Neville yeah they've got another chance now Manchester United with Everett playing I, th I do feel he's an important player for Manchester United on this left hand side he gives them that extra width he got the ball over there Jaggy Elk has done a great job so far for Everton ball over the top is too deep and it'll run away for a goal kick and Michael Owen is, uh, is coming on for Manchester United yeah. It's getting one. tense, Jimmy. It is getting tense. Good, that's what makes it, that's what makes football. Now he's going to take Nani off. I think Everton will be pleased about that. What do you make of that change, Owen for Nani? <clears throat> I'm not quite sure really what he's thinking of here. Obviously, he's he's hoping that Michael Owen, you know, can just nick the goal, perhaps. It looks like Rooney's going to go to the left now. He'll come out on this side. That's what will happen. Because Nani's one of these players, he's always a threat, he's always likely to do something, you know, he's got this lovely touch on the ball. There are times when he frustrates you and annoys you, but, you know, he's the kind of player who can just open it up. But anyway, Everton obviously giving United something to think about here now. Well, they dropped points in midweek at Newcastle when they were held to a goal of straw at St James's Park. Newcastle played well. They're in danger of dropping two more points here. If it stays like this, there's still a long way to go. Oh, long 27 way. minutes half remaining. An half an hour, yeah. Nil-nil. Rooney looking for a ball for Hernandez. Hernandez with an outstretched right leg. Just asking too much of the Mexican. I must be honest, I did, 
you know, they, they've had a bit of success with, with, with long balls, particularly from the goalkeeper, Manchester United, you know. And uh, they've persisted with that when Van der Sar came. But I think their normal play, I think they're always better when they play what I call a link game, the, the pass-run, pass game, you know. I think that's where they're really very good. And I think in this second half, the passes haven't been quite, you know, as adventurous as they might be at times. And anyway, we'll see. Rodwell heading it forward. Anderson holding off Osman, continuing to hold off Osman, who is a little bit too combative, snapping away at the heels and, in the end, ultimately giving away a free kick as we'll go around the grounds and get some team news from our three o'clock game starting at Bloomfield Road a very important game Blackpool of course in the bottom three they're at home to Newcastle David Oates and Ian Holloway's made three changes Baptiste for Cathcart Vaughan for Grandine and Phillips for Varney there's just one Newcastle change Nolan free from suspension now for Guthrie thanks David 64 minutes played here at Old Trafford there's a bit of a breeze sweeps around the main stand with a breeze at the door opening a little bit further as far as the title race is concerned should it stay like this for the chasing teams Chelsea and Arsenal who are at Bolton tomorrow you'll hear commentary of that on five live from four that's after Rangers against Celtic at 12.30 Anderson picking up a loose ball here in the Everton half Anderson driving forward for Manchester United as they play from right to left Anderson shot did it take a deflection Peter Walton eventually giving a goal kick no it was a, I, I couldn't really. oh he's changed his mind has he no he hasn't he, I think what, what he's no, doing it is a goal kick he took his time though didn't he well he did because he didn't know and the linesman actually didn't give him a great deal of help he was rather slow uh, pointing out that he thought it was a goal kick but the Manchester United players thought it was a corner kick as you would expect <laughs> Anderson coming in from the right hand side hit that with his left foot oh yeah the referee's down Peter Wallen has just slipped. It was a Valencia trip, yeah, saw him, ref. <laughs> it's his first match he's actually taken charge of at Old Trafford since September 2009. And uh, Peter Walton just having a little tumble there, much to the enjoyment of this Old Trafford crowd. Get him on telly, that tonight. Imagine, though, the, the crowd, every United fan listening, will continue to... Feel a little bit more nervous as the, the minutes tick by. But if, if it finishes nil nil, would you consider that a point one or two points lost? Two points lost, wouldn't you? I suppose sometimes when you're in the situation of Manchester United, every point counts because the rest have got to catch them. But yes, I think they would be looking for the three today here. Yeah. Well, certainly Sir Alex Ferguson was saying if we win, we're at least, at least six points clear with four games to play. That is a situation, mm. even though they are playing Arsenal and Chelsea, I think they'd be happy yeah, with Yeah, they wouldn't want to be sort of sweating it out against the other two, would he? No, but they mm. wouldn't want to drop two points thinking? today, which would be four yeah. in a week. You know, when you think, look at their own record this season, only one draw, all the rest victories. This is where they get it and get the points. Actually undefeated in 28 games in total at home since Chelsea won last April. But they need the three points today. Here is Owen, the substitute, without a shadow of a doubt. Anything else is a bad result for Manchester United and will offer plenty of encouragement for Chelsea in action later on at 5.30 and Arsenal tomorrow. And Everton have been good value for this in the second half. We're midway through the second period. It's Manchester United nil, Everton nil. This could well be a defining 22 and a half minutes in the title race. Alan Green. A draw will not do for United, it's as simple as that. Here's Osman over the halfway line for Everton, who's shown a great deal more in the second half of this game here at Old Trafford. Good ball on uh, to Osman again, edge of the penalty chair. He plays it back deliberately towards Coleman, vital header away that was by Everett. Cahill to Neville. And Rodwell, who's done very little in the game, has to be said, for all the uh, hype surrounding the young player. Here's Coleman. Uh, Coleman to Hibbert, Hibbert midway inside the United half, the Everton right back. Back to Neville, and here's Distan. Everton yeah. has shown far more Resilience. interest in going forward yeah, in the yeah. second period. Yeah, the, the back four has stood well in Neville, I think. You know, they've, they've stood really well in this match. Neville, good ball to the left side in Baines. Baines into Osman. Rodwell shows and gets the ball about 25 yards out. On his right foot, shoot throw, great save by Van der Sar. Well, he spoke to life, Rodwell, there. A few passes went before that from Everton, 
and Rodwell picked it up on his right foot he got it about 10 yards outside the penalty it was a good shot and I think that might have sneaked in on the on the far post it was going in Jim it was yeah. a great save by Van der Sar and he's just got it round the post well he has had a great deal to do Edwin Van der Sar but my word that was an important save Everton have got a corner just 21 minutes left for play here at Old Trafford you're listening to 5 Live at the BBC Osmond's corner short for Baines back to Osmond first time cross deep caught by Van der Sar yeah they didn't want that and Van der Sar throws it out to Rooney Rooney does well evading Coleman gets it on to Hernandez now it's Ever down the near side of the field Everett need to get bodies back Manchester United attacking the Stratford end on to Rooney Rooney trying to create room for the shot running into trouble loses the ball to Phil Neville and Neville runs it clear for Everton they got back well Everton there they were attacking and lost the ball and saw David Moyes screaming at them all to get back and they all rallied to the call as much as anything and as Alan told you Phil Neville did well uh, unfortunately he didn't do so well there no. he gave the ball away Neville and uh, now it's Fabio running forward Fabio to Rooney good first time pass by Rooney to the right side and Valencia uh, controls it off his chest now crosses right footed in towards Rooney headed away by Coleman and Osman might get there and ahead of Gibson uh, the Irishman at fault Gibson should have had that ball didn't get it Cahill to Neville Neville for Everton who are 20 minutes away from what would be a really good result for them and a poor result for Manchester United but it's still 20 minutes now on the far side of the field it's Baines um, attacking much more in the second period than he did in the first back to Cahill Cahill to Rodwell the ball's going back towards the halfway line momentum gone for the moment for Everton uh, Neville to Baines back to Distan uh, Hernandez spotted an opportunity to intercept didn't quite get there and Everton still have the ball Rodwell in the centre circle Coleman available so too is Cahill it goes to the Aussie back to Rodwell and a good run forward by Osman. Osman's pass back to Coleman and each of you says give it to me it's played in towards and each of you almost there ahead of Fabio but uh, neither of them make contact with the ball and Van der Sar has it yeah good play by Coleman actually they need to be just timed his run a little bit too late just allowed time Fabio to get round the back Van der Sar uh, in front of an increasing anxious old Trafford crowd here finds Anderson on to Rooney near side of the field always looks the player in red most likely to Rooney Rooney finds Ebra a second half substitute to another second half substitute Owen into Anderson in the penalty area Anderson has his route to call block but he gets the cross in behind Owen and it's cleared uh, vitally cleared by Jagielka and you know Everton are attacking as much as United are at the well, moment and well it's good really from that point of view because what it does it stretches Manchester United as well at the back Baines in the far side of the field Cahill with his arm aloft Baines cross was poor uh, Cahill knows it uh, Baines lucky to get a throw in level with the edge mm. of the United penalty area he never leaves them alone David Moyes does he on the side of the field there he's screaming at them all the time he's sending his oh uh, another intervention by the referee he took that pass forward in his midriff and it, I think that will hurt Peter mm. he will do if Manchester United score off this here's Gibson Gibson to Fabio 18 minutes to go every Chelsea and Arsenal fan willing Everton on here still think their hopes are slender but this would give them an opportunity uh, was that a foul by Rooney on Coleman no it wasn't referee was close by Giggs I wondered when Giggs would come on rather overdue here's Anderson Anderson plays into the left side to Evra Evra now in toward the penalty into the penalty no cross in cleared by Jagielka on the half volley almost reached the halfway line the clearance Evans back to Anderson Anderson to Evra once more Evra rolls the ball under the sole of his left foot gives it uh, the pass to Anderson back now to Gibson the crowd hoping that he shoots he, he doesn't he passes instead to Fabio Fabio's cross into the penalty area distant where head are clear Everton have got everybody back bar in each of it. 17 minutes to go Giggs awaits a hold up in play so that he can come on here's Evra Evra with a cross into the penalty area headed away by Distan here's Anderson again clearance not having gone that far finds Rooney Rooney a player sort of diving at his feet Rooney passes the ball to the right side and Fabio close to the corner flag Fabio's crossed it a deflection and then a shot off the post 
Was that Michael Owen? I think it was Owen on the near post. It was a crowded penalty area. When the ball came over the right hand side, he got Owen, got his foot to it, and he just said, I thought he was in just for a second, but he's come back off the post. Michael Owen, you know there's a goal on Michael Owen. It's such a stage well, that's what for he's the run in. For. Um, Giggs is coming on uh, for Gibson. We'll get a quick update from Simon Mann and Carter. Well, perfect timing because Queen's Park Rangers have just equalised and it's Tarab who's got his second goal of the match, controlling the ball just inside the penalty area and placing his shot past Stephen Bywater. They hadn't really threatened in the second half, but they've got their equaliser. It's Cardiff 2, Queen's Park Rangers 2. And it's Hereford nil Shrewsbury 2. Uh, an Everton change uh, following a Manchester United one. Giggs replaced Gibson and now uh, Gay has come on for... Who came off? Coleman. Yeah. Yes, well, Giggs now. Here he comes again. Can he do it again? A little over a quarter of an hour to go here. Nil-nil at Old Trafford, the Barclays Premier League. Here is Giggs. Giggs, the 37-year-old, crosses low into the penalty area. Hooked away in the volley by Jagielka. And then here's Neville. Neville used to play with Giggs. Youth team, reserve team, and, of course, first team, famously. What a career Phil Neville had at Old Trafford. What a career he's having, too, at Everton. Truly a mank that's been adopted by Merseyside, which doesn't happen all that often. No, he's done a great uh, job, I think, since he's made that transition. I think he's done really well. He's played well today. He's a good leader of the pack for them. Even the two central defenders, I think Jaggy Elk and Distan have been outstanding today. 15 minutes to go. Manchester United nil, Everton nil. Fabio, the right back for United to Rooney. Rooney now, centre of the Everton half. On to Anderson. Owen waits in the penalty here. The ball goes to Hernandez first of all. His attempt at cross blocked by Jagielka behind for a corner. Yes, Everton have been pushed back again. It's the weight of pressure as much as anything else. And the arrival of Giggs won't help Everton's cause. It's going to be a corner. It's going to be Anderson taking it from the right side with his left foot. At the Stratford end. Here comes Anderson. Plays the corner short to Valencia. Back to Anderson. The angle's better. A deep cross headed clear uh, by Everton. And uh, it was Rodwell who got his head to the ball and decided to play for a throw in near side of the field. That's where they've done well, I think. They've got the headers away, six yarders, you know, done well the defence. Here's uh, Rooney after the throw in. Rooney finding Giggs. Giggs, low pass into Michael Owen in the penalty. Owen's there. Owen tackled by Neville. Get the ball back to Anderson. His shot hits uh, Valencia and it's cleared temporarily by Everton. Then Fabio crosses into the penalty, out comes Hard, and he gathers it well, and Hard throws it out well to Cahill, and each of his sprinting forward. Can Cahill's pass pick him out? No, he can't. Poor from the Aussie. And Anderson, frustration there for David Moyes. He saw a glimmer of a chance. Yes, there was re really Cahill's been around long enough to have played that ball earlier than he did. Owen, back to Rooney. Owen's gone closest of any United player today. Uh, a flick on, hitting the post, rebounding to safety for Everton now. Valencia on the far side of the field. Back to Anderson. Anderson pretty much centre of the Everton half. To Rooney. Attack, attack, attack. That's what they're chancing United fans. Cross played in by Rooney. Too high for Valencia. And it's going to be a goal kick. A lovely exchange of passes for Manchester United. Anderson to Rooney. Lovely chip over Everton's back four. And uh, it was Valencia running in and Baines running back with him. Just enough really big challenge to put him off. Uh, hard getting a bit of stick um, from the fans at the Stratford end because they think he's uh, wasting time. Well, he's not, not really, is he? No, but I mean, frankly, if you're going to get away with wasting the odd second, you'll do it if you're playing away to Manchester United. Ball is on the far side of the field, headed out of play by Baines, throw into United just beyond the halfway line. Fabio to take it, 12 and a half minutes to go here in the Barclays Premier League. You'd a think, mighty lunchtime clash. Yeah, you'd think the weight of pressure would finally tell, you know, with the players Manchester United have, but uh, so far Everton has stood well. And so far the gamble uh, he made in his team selection has not paid off. But that will change if United score. They've got a throw in on the near side of the field after Giggs was tackled by Osman. It's taken by Evra, finding Anderson. Uh, Owen rushes forward. Hernandez fouled by Jagielka. Yeah. That's what uh, Mr. Walton thinks. Yeah, I, I think he'd every right to go for that ball. <clears throat> wow. Uh, this is within shooting range. But they haven't got Nani on the pitch. Uh, so Giggs or Rooney. He'll not be taking it. No, no it'll, it'll be Rooney. Giggs is nowhere near the ball no, at the moment. No, he's not. 
Uh, Owen just went forward to have a, a quiet word with Wayne Rooney. Giggs is now and moving Pro near the ball as well. That's right. Now it'll still be Rooney. You would think so. Less than a dozen minutes left for play here mm. at Old Trafford. Giggs or Rooney? Giggs is in a position to take the free kick. My money's on a Rooney shot. Here he comes. Right footed, swirls in towards goal, tipped over by Hard. Corner. Yes, it was a good one. Good free kick. It was uh, just dipping under the bar, but uh, Award was ready for it. Moved quickly to his right, tipped it over the top. He got two hands on it. Corner tap short by Giggs to Evra. Evra faced by Neville. Passes back to Rooney. Rooney drills the shot in wide, a couple of yards wide. Yes, I think Everton were caught there. This business, as I mentioned earlier in the first half, about all the getting all the players back into, into your own penalty area. That's all well and good, provided if the ball comes out to the edge of the box. <laughs> nice, Sir Alex, with that oh-so-familiar gesture. <laughs> uh, left arm watch. extended, pointing at his watch. Yeah. And look, Sir Alex, the fourth official knows, so does the referee. Mm. Let them get on with it. They'll know if time's been wasted, they'll <laughs> add it on. Yeah. A little over 10 minutes to go, plus added time. That's right. Uh, Cahill, how's it down? Cahill's clearly not fit, is he? Ball now to the near side and Evra. Evra arguably should have started this game. Evra forward uh, towards the edge of the Everton penalty. Cross it low, shot by Valencia, hits his own player. Back to Valencia again, shifts it towards Hernandez, header, tipped over the bar by Hart. Yeah, it's the first one was very good block. Glenn's strike was terrific. And that header then from Hernandez, I thought he was in. Good save by Howard. They're still here, Manchester United again. Corner taken short to Giggs. Giggs crosses, hits uh, Hibbert, and it's another corner. Inside the final 10 minutes. Yes, I think the, it, you just get the opinion, the weight of pressure will tell it. If, it must do, surely, with the way Manchester United are playing at the moment, the crowd behind them. Giggs corner, left footed from the left, played in, header, goal words by Evans, headed away, here's Rooney, great initial control by Rooney, Rooney chips the ball to Valencia, overhits it, Valencia will do well to keep it in play, does keep it in play, plays it, plays it back, Fabio, right to the penalty here, crosses it in there, Rodwell heads it clear, and now Gay should have run that ball away, but didn't, Rooney has, that's a great ball by Rooney to the left side, hit 60 yards to Giggs, Giggs moving in from the touchline, flicks it on to where he thought Ever would be, he wasn't, and it's behind for a goal kick. Yes, it was asking too much of Ever that, I didn't think that was a, it, was, it looked clever by Giggs, but I don't think it was a very good pass, because Ever had run the long way. Anyway, the referee's now being pressured, because he's going to give the, he's booking, he's going to book hard for time wasting. And he's telling him, but he, he has been trying to, uh, let's say, slow things down, Jimmy. And now uh, he's getting jeered uh, by the fans who used to support him. That's the way of football. It is. Nine yeah. minutes to go, plus... Well, let's start thinking now, speculating about how much added time, Jim. <laughs> minimum of four, I say. Absolute cast-iron minimum of four. Minimum of four. Yeah. Ball is back to Van der Sar. We have had the changes, remember? Yes, They're so supposed to be 30 course, seconds yeah. each. Yeah. And then there's, quote, the wasted time. Minimum of four. Here's Giggs from the left. Low ball into the penalty area. Good clearance by Jagielka. Excellent control from that clearance by Evra on his chest. Finding Giggs to Owen. Back to Evra. Into Rooney. Rooney's playing in midfield now. And he's chipped it forward, to, looking for Giggs. Another good clearance by Jagielka. Finding Neville. Neville's pass to an each of near side of the field. Little push over by Evans. That's a free kick. Yeah. There wasn't when, much in it, but it was no, a push. Were, players go down to ground easily when the challenge from behind now. Both teams have done it today. And this time when each of went down. There's no need for Evans to get as close as that. You know, he wasn't going anywhere on the halfway line. So Everton got a free kick. Just give them a little bit of respite. They needed it. Uh, I thought Jackie Elko wasn't at his best in the first half, but he's, oh, he's been good. fantastic in the second Very period. Good. He's been a very good today. Him and Distan have done well. Uh, Owen heads the ball down, but it's away from the Mexican. And then Distan was sluggish to respond. And Moyes was furious at that. And Distan's clearance in the end wasn't good either. Now it's Valencia on the far side, running at Distan, edge of the penalty, crosses deep, looking for Hernandez, the header guy, and it's into the net, and the Mexican have scored a prompt league winning goal for Manchester United. The pressure told, seven minutes to go. It was a superb.
Yeah, so it's been coming to weight of pressure this finally told on Everton here. It was a lovely cross by Valencia, right to the back post. And then has got it well and headed it into the net. But Everton will be furious because this stands, he Kick should have cleared the ball. He had a wonderful chance and he tried to let it drop to his left foot instead of getting it away with his right foot. And in the end, Everton were punished. You know, you can't do that against the good teams, and that's exactly what happened. It was a lovely cross, though, by Valencia. Lovely cross, and a good header, too, by Hernandez. He didn't have much goal to aim at, Jimmy. No, but really, he, really good header. Well, he, he gets up well, of course. Now then, Everton have got a real problem now. How are they going to tackle this problem? But it was a, I think Manchester United have deserved that goal, to be frank. They've, they've been squeezing Everton, you know, in the last sort of 20 minutes. Hibbert plays it forward. Cahill takes it on his chest, edge of the United penalty area, but doesn't control it. It's back to Van der Much relief around Old Trafford for those in red. It was all about distance. It was shocking defending by him. I don't know why he, he let it go to his strong foot, of course. And then, of course, you know, you lose out. And you can't afford to do that in your own half as much as anything. But still, it still required a good cross and a good header. And Manchester United provided both. Neville jumping with Owen, uh, wins the ball, heads it back to Jagielka. Jagielka whips it upfield, headed on by Gay, but uh, behind Anichibi, and it's played back by Ferdinand to Van der Sar. I'm not exactly sure how well uh, Rio Ferdinand is moving, Jimmy. Just mm. look at the way he walks around the pitch. Yeah. Well, he's had the back trouble, it, isn't of course. It? He's had the back trouble. Five minutes to go. Manchester United won, Everton nil. Here's Rooney uh, to Everett, near side of the field, over the halfway line now. Owens inside, Giggs is ahead of him, goes to Giggs. Giggs running away from Osman, running at Hibbert. Everett still in support. Giggs plays it in low. Hernandez deliberately let it run, and it's cleared by Baines. Baines now out of his penalty area and rushing forward towards the halfway line. Gay to his left, and each of you through the middle. Gay has the ball and plays it back to Neville in the centre circle. Everton haven't given up here they're not lying down they never give up Neville to Osman Osman to uh, Anichibi Anichibi back to Osman again into the penalty here tackled by Ferdinand ball breaks away Anderson runs clear of Gay he tried to pull him back and finally pulls him down and that should be a yellow card because he tried to follow him at least three times yeah he got him third time got his arm around him and but what it's done it's not what Everton wanted there really Anyway, it was, uh, there was just a moment there when I thought Everton just might have got a route through, Osman and Neville, but just couldn't provide that final pass. Rooney, if anything, is dropping deeper. Yes, he's playing just to tap, playing just in front to help of the midfield. midfield. Yes, he is. The ball is back with Van der Zaar from that uh, free kick. And Van der Zaar finds Evans. Evans, back to Van der Zaar. And uh, out to the Ulsterman again. On to Rooney. Back to Evans. Manchester United slowing things down here. That's a good, sensible play. Van der Zaar to Evans and Rooney. And Rooney now hits it to Owen. Just on the halfway line, Michael Owen. Left side for United to Giggs. Giggs with Hernandez through the middle. Finds the Mexican with a pass. Back to Giggs. Owen still scurrying forward, but ignored by uh, Giggs. The pass goes back to Anderson instead. Three minutes to go. On to Owen. Uh, now Sir Alex won't want out of time of course no. he won't want any he'll be hiding that watch soon oh he's actually looking at it now but he's just willing the 90 minutes uh, to finish Ferdinand to Rooney excellent work by United they're just keeping possession here and they're trying Everton to draw really Everton out a little bit you see as well they can afford to do it now they've got time on the side they've got the goal on the side back to Van der Sar who hits it upfield, Jagielka with a careful header down to Neville, Neville, poor flick from uh, Phil Neville, but Osman gets the ball back for Everton, to the errant Distan, Distan, slashes it upfield, Ferdinand heads it away, Osman heads it down, Gay in the orange boots, um, needs to be better than that to wear orange boots, loses the ball, here's Giggs over the halfway line, to Evra, Giggs rushes forward, Evra, goes with him, now finds the Osman with a pass just to the left of the penalty area two minutes to go at Old Trafford, Manchester United 1, Everton 0, Hernandez 19th goal of the season what a season he's had yes, he is. He is. Fabio on the far side 
uh, defending back to Fabio and the pass back to Van de Zaar. Out it goes to Evans. Evans just a couple of yards outside his penalty area. I'll tell you one thing about the goal as well. This is how high he got up to the ball, you know, when he had to when he had to edit in. And you said he didn't have a lot to aim at either. Here Rooney. It's a good to, goal. To Owen. Uh, Giggs back to Evra. And Rooney on the halfway line. Anderson rushes forward. It's ignored by Rooney. That's a good ball instead to Ferdinand. And they're just running down the clock now, Manchester United. Having got the lead through Hernandez. And again, I can't emphasise enough how little of the goal he had to head at from the angle. It was a lovely cross by Valencia. By Valencia. Anderson rushes forward, ran into distance, but the ball squirts away back to those in red. Fabio uh, to Rooney. Uh, Rooney's poor pass, intercepted by Osman. Neville to Osman again on the halfway line. David Moyes wants them upfield. Everton obey. Uh, not a good ball by Osman, but it might still be in play on the far side of the field. It is. Gay. Back to Baines. Baines midway inside the United half. Baines uh, taking on Valencia. Beats him. He was fouled by Valencia. Play continues. The advantage with Everton. Cross into the penalty area towards an Ichimi. Half clear. Gay picks it up again. Gay. About six yards from the corner fly. Running away from Fabio. Checks. Still outside the penalty area. Gives it to Baines. They need to get a good cross in here. Baines attempts to cross. It's blocked by Michael Owen. Yeah, the shows. It's all hands to the front now. This uh, That's Michael Owen in the right fullback position. Just the, checking Baines. The 19 minutes is up. And we're still waiting for the fourth official to tell us how much time is being added on. Throw in to Everton on the far side of the field. Here comes the fourth official. Neville to take the throw in. You're going to win the Throws money. it back to Bank. Five minutes, Jim, I told you. Uh, <laughs> but I wanted more than that if it was still nil-nil. No, they don't want it. Here's Neville with a deep cross. Uh, looking for Hibbert. Hibbert header goalwards, but not a, a threatening header. And then the ball fell on the volley to Jagielka. And he volleys high and behind. Yes, yeah, so at least this Everton got forward a little bit there. They had a few blue shirts, you know, in Manchester United's penalty area. You know, I was looking down down the right hand side, and there's there's not too much really gone at Van der Sar's goal today. He made one extremely good save from Young Rodwell uh, in the second half, but basically Manchester United's defence have coped with what they had to do. It took a long time to get the ball back from the crowd. Is he wasting uh, time? Yes. <laughs> Ref. Oh, he, he noticed. He did notice. And now Van der Sar is taking an age to take the goal kick. So they all do it when it sits them. Manchester United leading 1-0. We've already played a minute of the five minutes of added time. This would be such a massive win for them. The next league game, remember, Arsenal away next Sunday. And after that, it's Chelsea here at Old Trafford. Uh, that looked like a foul on Evans, on Anichibi. Play continues. There was no foul, according to uh, Mr Walton. The referee, now it's with Hibbert. Hibbert crosses from the right into the penalty air. Header goal words by Cahill, but it was a looping header and it was an easy save for the Hooks goalkeeper. Cahill's uh, down, but he's up. Yeah, yes, at least it was uh, something better. But it was too far out, that header, really, to, to test Van der Sar. Uh, Van der Sar, in no hurry to clear the ball upfield. Now he does. Distant, heads it back towards the centre circle, dropping towards Rodwell. Uh, Rodwell seemed to be fouling Michael Owen, right in front of the referee. Uh, no free kick given. Hibbert chips it forward. Evra rather slices the clearance. Jagielka heads it away from Rooney. Evans heads it up in the air. And each of you thought he was being fouled. A terrible control by Anderson. And then as Jagielka came forward, uh, he tackled by Evra. It's a great tackle by the French fullback and the ball's out of play for a throw into Manchester United. I think he's played well, Jaggy Elker. He, you know, he's got a lot of energy in his game. He's trying to push the forward down, push it uh, forward, Everton, down the right-hand side. Everett's throwing onto the head of Hibbert. And uh, Rooney surely fighting Cahill there. Anyway, the shirts are being tugged. Referee allowed play to continue. Ferdinand chips it forward, inviting the run from Valencia. Distant is so slow to get across. Valencia gets to the ball first. Valencia now running at Distan into the penalty area. Checks. Distan falls on his backside. Pass back by Valencia to Rooney. Rooney 35 yards out. No great hurry. Finally flicks the cross in towards Hernandez and it's headed away by Everton. Gay. Two minutes to go of added time. 
Ferdinand has the ball back. Baines is waiting for it. Baines ran forward, um, ran into Fabio, and I think that the referee got it absolutely right. I thought that Baines had been fouled by Rooney previously. Yes, he was. had been, and the play was brought back for a free kick. That was good refereeing. Neville to take it. Jagielka has gone forward. Distance going forward. An opportunity, perhaps, for Everton to deny Manchester United the win. Neville plays it deep and too deep uh, for Anichibi, who's mm -hmm. behind for a goal kick. I couldn't see the point of that free kick there. He's played it sort of to the left of goal, 10 or 15 yards left. If you would have thought, really, just hang that ball up, really, you know, in the danger area, in the central <laughs> area, and see what happens. I swear, Sir Alex was talking to the fourth official about the time. Mm. You know, no, Sir Alex, you've got 45 seconds minimum to go. And he's looking at his watch again. <laughs> if it had been nil-nil, he'd have been pleading for extra time. Van der Zaar, with the goal kick, hit straight out of play on the near side of the field. Throw into Everton. 30 seconds to go. A minimum 30 seconds. Hibbert, no time to waste. Uh, took a while to take the throw and gets it back from Neville. Hits it upfield. Uh, Kale's header seemed to come off Evans. Oh, no. Oh, the no. way linesman. Uh... What's he saying? He's given the throw into Manchester United. Was it? No. No, it wasn't. So, I mean, and that was right in front of the assistant. Everett with a throw in. We've had the five minutes of out of time now. Uh, Jackie Elka heads the ball down. Baines rather delayed. It was tackled, partly tackled by Valencia. Uh, now here's Jackie Elka. Jackie Elka heads the ball to Baines. Baines flicks it forward, but that's a no hold pass. Ferdinand. Uh, slices the clearance, it's high, dropping just outside the centre circle. Two Everton players challenge for the ball, one of them wins it, Jackie Elka, third to final whistle. Vital win for Manchester United. Yes, great result for Manchester United, this. Then you catch us now, they'll be saying, goal when it came, really, Everton were kicking themselves a little bit, it was a lovely cross from Valencia, a great header from Hernandez, just right at the vital time. Prior to that, they had all the pressure, Owen at the post, Everton, not too much, just one ever from Rodwell, well saved by Van der Sar, but this really is a big step for Manchester United today. They've got four games to go, next to Arsenal and Chelsea, but they're nine points clear at this moment in time. Manchester United 1, Everton 0.